We're back at Comiskey Park in Chicago. A sellout crowd on hand this afternoon as the Sox take on the Blue Jays. Game three of this three-game series with the Toronto Ball Club. Series tied at one game apiece, and it's Black Sunday here in Chicago. The White Sox will again wear their black jerseys. Try and turn things around right now on Sunday, getting ready for the big road trip to the West Coast. Now let's take a look at this afternoon's starting lineups. First for the Blue Jays, they're managed by Cito Gaston. Leading off in center field, Devon White. Batting second at second base, Roberto Alomar. Joe Carter hits third, he'll play left field. The cleanup man is first baseman John Olerud. Mark Witten is in right field with that great throwing arm. He'll hit fifth. Greg Myers catches batting sixth. He's followed by the D.H. Mookie Wilson. Ray Gianelli gets a start at third base, batting eighth. And the ninth place hitter at shortstop, Rene Gonzalez. Pitching this afternoon for the Blue Jays, right-hander Todd Stottlemyre. Todd 5-0 and with an outstanding 293 earned run average in seven starts. And here's the White Sox lineup he'll be facing, given by manager Jeff Torborg. Leading off in left field, Tim Raines. Batting second and center, Lance Johnson. Robin Ventura returns to the lineup after being hit on the wrist yesterday. He's okay, batting third at third base. Cleanup man is the DH, Big Frank Thomas. Matt Marullo is at first base, hitting fifth. He's followed by catcher Ron Karkovice. Sammy Sosa plays right field, will bat seventh, hitting eighth at second, Joey Cora. And the ninth place hitter at shortstop, El Capitan Ozzie Guillen. Pitching for the Sox is right-hander Jack McDowell. Jack, five and two. 3.05 earned run average in eight starts. He's been the Sox most effective starter this season. Jack has three complete games to his credit, working 59 innings, just 48 hits allowed, 22 walks, and he can strike you out. 48 strikeouts, the American League batting 220 against Jack. In his last start Monday against the Red Sox, he had a no decision, working seven and two thirds strong innings, nine hits, two earned runs, he walked three while striking out five. The umpires this afternoon, the men in blue, behind home plate is Joe Brinkman, Daryl Cousins is at first base, Rocky Rowe at second, and at third, Rick Reed. The Sox defensively line up this way, Tim Raines in left field, Lance Johnson plays center, and Sammy Sosa in right. Around the horn, and Robin Ventura at third base, Ozzie Guillen at shortstop, Joey Cora gets the start at second base, and Matt Marullo at first. The battery? McDowell and Ron Karkovice. The weather at Comiskey Park, very pleasant, 57 degrees. Wind out of the northeast at 15, and partly sunny and cool. They're getting ready to get things started. And Hawk, this is a big game for the White Sox because they want to get that momentum established for a big, tough road trip coming up against the California Angels and Oakland A's. Now, Webby, they've got to get a rhythm going, as we talked about a lot last night. And it's one of those situations, our club, as any club that's going to play well, you have to develop a rhythm. And unfortunately, the Sox can't get there because of the defense. And anytime you have bad defense, you are not going to create or develop a rhythm. But right here, Devon White will step in, the center fielder hitting at 289. He is four for nine in this series, and he's knocked in a couple of runs. Outfield swung around to the left, been turning on the grass. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball, coming your way right here on Sports Channel. A beautiful afternoon for baseball. And as Wimpy mentioned, a big crowd on hand. Matt Marullo in close at first. As the count evens at one. 347 down each line here at Comiskey Park. 375 in the power alleys. 400 straightaway center field. And just a gorgeous playing surface. Thanks to Roger Bosser. Last ball inside in the count two and one. White one of four switch hitters in the lineup this afternoon. Alomar, Whitten, Mookie Wilson, and if Manny Lee was starting at shortstop, they would be five. Wow. The two one pitch. Good splitter right there from Jackson in the count. He was at two. He let that one work for him. Bottom just fell right out. Well, Jack McDowell's fastball will be more effective if he really changes speeds on that off that split finger pitch. That one was pretty indicative of that. That was a slow one. Watch it. He really did let that one work for him. Devon White way out in front. Just off the corner says Joe Brinkman, crew chief. And Roberto Alomar, the on deck hitter.
Payoff pitch. He's gone. He'll grab some bench. It's a nasty pitch right here from McDowell. Check it out. It's the splitter. Look at it. Go down out of the strike zone, but Devon can't hold up. He's been a very aggressive hitter his entire career. Gets very few walks. Bang, you're dead. So here's the 23 year old Roberto Alomar. Second baseman takes the ball. He is two for eight in this series, knocked in a couple. Hitting 262, four homers, and 19 ribbies on the year. Where was it? 2 and 0 the count. Now feel straight up for Alomar. Hey, you see the Sox the way they defend Roberto. Bit of a gap between Lance and Reigns. First three hitters in this Blue Jay lineup each have 12 doubles. It's just off the plate. So the 3 1 pitch. Good fastball strike. I think what Jack's trying to do right here is figure out Brinkman's strike zone. Looks like it. I've always felt like Joe Brinkman's been a pitcher's umpire. Shot base hit. Jack just glares in at Brinkman. Already a little tension <laughs> developing between the two. Well, Jack's figuring that Brinkman set up that base hit because he forced him into a, exactly. a fastball count. Fastball count right there. Fastball down over the middle of the plate. Inside out stroke by Alomar. You see his hands coming through before the barrel of the bat. He hit it nicely. So runner at first base and one out. More importantly, a guy with good speed on at first base. And we all know that McDowell, not real good at holding runners on base. Equalizer behind the plate, though. Number 20, Karkovic, as Joe Carter steps in. Carter is hit 13 of the last 14 ball games. Had a 12 game hitting streak broken here on Friday in the opener. In this series, he is two for nine. Webby mentioned Alomar, nine for 11. Uh, between the lines this afternoon for the Blue Jays, that slider is the key pitch for Stottlemyre. He has been more effective getting out left-handed hitters as a result. For the Sox, McDowell's got to keep those base runners close. And, of course, the win on getaway day is so important to set up that West Coast road trip. But keeping these first three guys close at first base, they're the guys that can steal the bases. There's the strike. Alomar had just a very short lead that time. A little bigger lead this time. Does not go. I feel extremely around to the left. Yep, Joe Carter's right on top of that plate, and he looks like he's trying to hook everything. We have seen him take some pretty good breaking balls and actually hit him out of the ballpark down and away. Here's a look at Joe. Got to pitch him upstairs with the fastball. Pops this one up. Foul territory. It'll be back into the crowd about six rows. So Jack on top, a ball and two strikes. You want baselines? You got him. Sox early offense in the first inning runs in five of their last eight games scoring in that first inning. Sox starters seeking support four plus runs in four of the last 14 ball games. That's not very good offense and the Blue Jays flying high. They have won seven of the last 10 ball games although they're not as good at a road team as they are at home. Alomar had a decent lead over there. 
top of the fourth inning at Cleveland, Indians shutting out Oakland three to nothing. Seattle at New York, bottom of the fourth, no score. Sox, a record of 16 and 16. Blue Jays, they are seven over 22 and 15. Palomar does not go. Fastball up and in. Then the count evens at two. 380 consecutive games, says that man right there. Got going for him. He's a horse. There goes Alomar. Pitch hit into right field. That's Sammy. Two gone. And McDowell stayed basically with the hard stuff on Carter. That's so why you got to pitch, Joe, if you want to get him out consistently. Got to have pretty good stuff, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that makes three and a half million dollars a year. You better have some pieces of stuff out there. Here's the 22 year old first baseman, John LaRue. There you see the numbers on Holy. 0 for 3 on Friday. On the outside corner of Beauty by Jackson. And the count nothing in one. Blue Jays as a team have 31 stolen bases in 45 attempts. Sox have 26 stolen bases in 39 attempts. Pitch out nothing on and the count evens a ball a strike. There's a skipper. Nasik on the left, Sammy Ellis on the right. This just misses an account. Two balls and a strike with two out as the Blue Jay skipper, Cito Gaston. He'll peruse the situation and that stoic look that he has. Foul tip back and the county was a two. Detroit leading Minnesota eight to two. That's in the bottom of the third at Tiger Stadium. Tigers trying to break an eight game losing streak. California leading Baltimore five nothing. Top of the fourth at Memorial Stadium. So we'll see what Alomar wants to do on a two two pitch. Big, strong left handed hitter. Get him out front on a good splitter right there. Joy Cora will make the call, catch the ball, and it'll retire the side. Nothing across, it was a hit. No errors, the man left after a half inning of play. It's the Blue Jays, nothing, and the Sox coming to bat. Bottom of the first inning here at Comiskey Park in Chicago. The Blue Jays failed to score off Jack McDowell in the top half of the inning. So the Sox will get their first look of the season at young right-hander Todd Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre, son of Mel Stottlemyre, the former Yankee great pitcher and present pitching coach for the New York Mets. Todd 5-0 and with a 2.93 earned run average in seven starts. He has completed no games, has given up only 32 hits in 46 innings. That's a great number right there. 17 walks, 33 strikeouts. 192 is what the American League is batting against Todd Stottlemyre. So he's a tough one. Good sinker, hard slider. Defensively, the Blue Jays have Carter, White, and Witten in the outfield. Gianelli, Gonzalez, Alomar, Olerud around the horn and the battery this afternoon. Todd Stottlemyre and Greg Myers. Stottlemyre has won his four last decisions. He even beat Nolan Ryan in one of them. So he has been a red hot Blue Jay pitcher as of late. In his last start Monday against the Royals, he won. 
eight and a third innings, gave up only six hits and two runs. He walked two while striking out six. Now his big problem over the years, Hawk, has been left-handed hitters. Right-handers have hit absolutely nothing off him, but with that good hard slider now, he's getting lefties out too. Well, as you mentioned, he has tightened it up, and of course, if that is the case, indeed, that is a big reason he is 5-0. and oh. It'll be Reigns, Johnson, and Ventura. Timmy one for six in the series. Hitting at 225. Takes the first pitch in the left field, Joe Carter. So very quickly, one gone, and that'll bring up Lance Johnson. Lance hitting at 230, no homers, three ribbies. Two for six in this series, and he's knocked in a run. Gianelli and on the grass at third old root halfway at first outfield short swung around to the left. There's a, an all speed pitch like an overhand curveball. Yeah. Low and inside he might be just wanting to set up that hard slider with that one. Give him a couple of different looks. Oftentimes these guys will just have a show me pitch. That's inside the count two and oh. Why is it Hawk that a lot of right handed pitchers would throw fastball curveball to the left handers and then fastball slider to the right handers. <laughs> Why do they do that? I'll tell you that slider as it is from the left handed pitcher to the right handed hitter down in the end is the most devastating pitch the left hander has to the right handed hitter. Right. Now not down and in so much to the left hander but usually right at the belt. Is there the shot based in over the head of Rene Gonzalez so good speed aboard and lands he has been swinging about well. Starting with that four for four against the Cubs on Thursday. Yeah, nice swing right here by Lance. He got the ball out in front. Watch it right. Pitches pretty much down the middle of the plate. But that ball looked like it rose over Gonzalez's head. And when he hit it, it looked like it was going to be right at him. Well, he just scalds this one. Good inside out inning hitting there by Lance, getting the hands in front of the barrel of the bat. So speed on the base paths with Lance Johnson. And here's Robin. Lance, five for seven in stolen bases. Fastball high off the plate, and the count one and zero. Oh. Big Frank. Boy, he, look, he even looks bigger in that black jersey. <laughs> <doesn't he? laughs> Those black high tops to match it. Well, you were explaining about why. That pitch, the slider from a right hander to a left handed hitter. Well, the really slider really that. down and in sometimes it's got to be so good from the right hander because the left handers are better low ball hitters. Yeah. And as a rule, the right hander wants to keep that slider about right at the belt where the guy has to make an adjustment with his hands and the bat itself. More or less like reroute it, like you, some guys would reroute a golf club. And then all of a sudden, if you try to do that, it becomes a push rather than a pull and you kill the, the speed of the bat. But you're right. A lot of a lot of right-handers will throw the curveball. Of course, if you could do it like Lamar Hoyt could when he was in a White Sox uniform and just backdoor those left-handed hitters, and oh, you yeah. got no problem whatsoever. Sure. Not too many guys can do that. The pitch off the plate in the count two and one. Lamar, without question, when he was with the White Sox, the best I have ever seen, bar none. Nobody really even second at backdooring those left-handed hitters with that big curveball. Yeah. He just threw it for strike one, throw oh, it yeah. early, late in the count. Sure. It didn't matter with him. He even threw it. Uh, he didn't do it too much three two, but he even do it on a lot of two two counts. He had that much. I'll tell you, he was something. Yeah. Well, yeah. He averaged about a walk every ten innings or so. 1983, when he was a Cy Young Award winner for the Sox. Lance on point, and of course that same year in '83, a lot of people thought Richard Dotson would have been a. Worthy recipient of the Cy Young Award, which indeed he would have. Any way he would have gone would have been okay. Yeah. But Dotson had the fastball that he could grab a strike anytime. Lance does not go. And the count three and one. Remember, Dotson, he could absolutely just thread the outside corner to the right hand hitter or the inside corner to the left hand hitter. He had that one release point yes. in 83. Yeah. He could just get a strike anytime he wanted it. And both those guys were great competitors, too. 
See what Lance does on the 3-1 count to Ventura. Look at Robin. Robin looks like he's got one foot out of the batter's box from the, on the side. See a big old he's standing. right there at first. Look at Robin. Look at his 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 foot. It's it's right on the line, the outside part of that uh, batter's box. There goes Lance. See something new all the time. Robin's the first guy. Of course, he's been doing it for a while. But when he first started doing it, first time I've ever seen that. That open stance. I've never seen the front foot of any hitter, right-handed or left-handed, on the line, the outside line of the batter's box. Yeah. That notes a severe open stance, as you can see right there. Look, his heel is right there on the outside part of the line. Almost creeping over it as he puts his uh, lifts that heel slightly off the ground. Of course, John Walkenfuss, the Detroit catcher, had a very unusual yeah. stance there for a while. <laughs> Old yeah. walk. He had his uh, left foot in front of his right. There goes Lance on a 3 2. As a double clutch, they will have no chance. Ventura strikes out. Greg Myers just couldn't do anything with it. So the stolen base, number six for Lance. And here comes Big Frank. Wow, look at the movement right there late for Stottlemyre. And Lance Johnson, that straight leg slide, he's right in there. Oh, boy. Good movement on that pitch. It was ball four. No chance for Myers as Robin was kind of blocking him off right there. But Walkenfuss, as we were talking about, used it was a right-handed hitter, and he put that left foot almost behind his right one. A smash off the arm of Gonzalez. Here comes Lance. He's going to score. Sox lead it one to nothing. Yes. A bullet by Big Frank. Well, Frank in his first at bat yesterday pulled the ball. Boy, you'd love to see him get the head of the bat out and pull the ball occasionally. Look at right there. It makes contact more out in front. And boy, he can just hurt some people on that left side of the infield. As you can see, that one hopper. Off Gonzalez, he had no chance right there. So an RBI for Frank Thomas, number 24 on the season, and Lance Johnson comes home. Look at this. Bang. Look at that thing just hooking at him. Oh, my. No chance. That's the first time Gonzalez has, has had an opportunity to make a tough play against us and hadn't done it. Right. Of course, that's just to base it all the way. So here's Matthew. Marullo. Hitting a 214, two homers, five ribbies. Ooh, Lordy, was that ball scalded. I'll tell you, Frank Thomas can pull the ball a little bit more. You know, it just, you really don't know what he's going to do. Hit a ton of homers, plus really hurt some people on that left side of the infield. Yeah, he could do that. That Ooh. top spin he creates yeah. with his strength is awesome. Man gets jammed, a little soft grounder. Gonzalez over to Olerud, and that'll retire the side, but the Sox get on the board a run. Two hits. No errors of man left. After one, Sox lead it, one zip. One nothing Sox, top of the second inning right now. Let's check out our slate of games. There you see Seattle at New York, Holman against Perez, Oakland at Cleveland, Slusarski, Whippy's boy against Nichols, California at Baltimore, McCaskill against Ballard. Other American League action, Minnesota, Detroit, Milwaukee, Kansas City, and Boston down in Arlington. In the National League, Buckos at Atlanta, San Diego, Cincinnati, Houston, and St. Louis. There you see the Mets against the Dodgers in L.A., Montreal at San Francisco, and the Cubs against the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. Mark Whitten leads off the top of the second inning, switch hitting right fielder, takes it low and inside. Witten just 24 years old. This Toronto Ball Club, a very young team, especially in their position players. That's looped out in left field. Here comes Reigns. Can't get there. Now it looks like Witten got jammed a little bit right here. Here's Tim Reigns coming on, trying to make the catch. Sox outfielders definitely are playing deeper in this new ballpark than they were at Old Comiskey. I don't know if it's the wind currents or whatever, but just looking at the alignment, a lot deeper. 
Here's the catcher, Greg Myers. Myers hitting at 268, a couple of homers. He's knocked in eight. Good fastball hitter. Beats this one foul. I got a feeling this Mark Witten, when he finds out just who he is, he's going to hit himself some home runs. He's powerful. Oh, yeah. Oh, he he's strong. really powerful. Uh huh. He just muscled that one out in there. He's done that a couple of times against us already this season. Yeah, he looks like he's rather thin, but second here. There's a shot. They sit right back through the middle. Quitting. Round second base, so he'll move into third as the Blue Jays. Nobody out. They have runners at the corners. Boy, that ball just went through there perfectly. He got jammed on this fastball inside. Watch it right there, just over the top of Jack's head. Look at it, just it stops before it gets to Lance Johnson in center. That's the reason Witten is able to go to third base. See the ball not hit very hard, just that slicing action of it after the jam shot. So runners at the corners with nobody out for the Blue Jays, and Jack McDowell's got to do some pitching now. That'll bring up the 35 year old veteran switch hitter, Mookie Wilson. But I agree with you said about Witten uh, Hawk. He's a big, strong guy. And he's gonna, he, I think he will hit a lot of homers. Wilson hitting at 237 on the season, no homers, six RBIs as Matt yells over to McDowell. He will indeed play behind Myers at first. Ventura in on the grass. That fastball fouled out of play. He had his first three hit game of the season on the 15th of this month against Kansas City. Alfield playing him well around to the left. Is that fastball again? And count 0 and 2. Two pitch checks it up. That remains nothing in two right here. You can't make a mistake with anything off speed. Wilson, better off speed hitter, like most of his teammates. Robin got a shot at home. Here they come. He'll grab some bench. All right. Good defensive play right there. Good pitch by Jack McDowell. All right. You got to throw Mookie Wilson hard stuff. And upstairs, he's a free swinger. He just chops this one. And Robin, do or die with a short hop. And that's what made that play possible right there. If he lays back on that, Witten will make it home easily. Park there. Good defensive play right there. Well, also the Sox catching a break. You got runners at the corners, nobody out. And if indeed that contact play was on, that's good for us and bad yeah. for them. Yeah. Here's third baseman Ray Gianelli. The fastball out of play. Yeah, you could understand that play a lot more if there was one out. There's one out, yeah. Well, okay. You got runners at the corners and no out. Yeah, because you, you got to make sure that ball gets by somebody. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right because that next guy still has a shot at driving in that runner from third with less than two outs, getting him home without a base hit. Well, we got a big break from him in Friday's game. Sox won that one five to three. Last night, <laughs> we didn't. Nah. We didn't create too many breaks for didn't ourselves. Didn't really deserve a break. No. One and one to count to Janelli, 25 year old. Third sacker. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm just glad to see Ed Sprague out of there. Yeah. He's had a great career hitting against the Sox in the last, what, four games that he's played against us? Been unreal. Sprague was two for three last night, a homer, two RBIs. He was four for six with three ribbies in this series, the first two games. That's foul back in the count, two and two. 
Sprague had a lot of firsts against us. Got his first hit, first major league hit against the Sox at Sky Dome. Got his first RBI later on. That was the next day. And then he had his first homer. Also made yesterday. his first error. Yeah. A whole bunch of firsts. Son of Ed. Former Oakland A pitcher. He's gone. Grab some bitch. Jack just reaching back down deep, I should say. And there's some just some good low fire right there. Yeah. Well, Gianelli with that swing right there, his approach, he's got to be a low ball hitter. And Jack just fires it right by him. As you can see, the uppercut swing by Gianelli. So two down. Runner still at first and second. Here's Gonzalez. Rene two for five in this series, but he has really played well defensively. He made a play last night that was just outstanding. Curveball, yes. That was a locker. You had the best curveball that you ever tried to hit against. Camilo Pasquale and ah. Burt Blylevin from the right side, Sam McDowell from the left side. That's hit hard in the left field. Lanes won't be able to get it. Here comes one run. Here comes Mookie Wilson. He's going to score. And the Blue Jays lead it two to one. Like a real bad pitch after he just completely fools him. His split finger just didn't do a whole lot. It just kind of hung out over the outside half of the plate and up. No movement whatsoever. And Gonzalez was able to get the head of the bat through the zone quickly. Double in the gap. So the Blue Jays take the lead here, two to one in the second. Devon White. He struck out last inning. 2 4 and 0 for Toronto, 1 2 and 0 for the Sox. Peter inside. Fastball on the outside corner. And it's one and one. Boy, that's a big double right there by Gonzalez. It's going to take the air out of the balloon a little bit. Yeah. Had runners first and third. Nobody out. Toronto makes a bad base running play. Looks like you might get out of it with two outs. Boom. You got the ninth place hitter up there who hadn't done a whole lot of against anybody. Of course he is. He hurt the Sox. He had the big hit in that uh, victory last Sunday. And one thing about Gonzalez, he'll swing the bat. Yeah. And that, he had that double that drove in a couple of runs. Uh, well that ball should have been caught though. That well, was just yeah. a little blooper out there in left field. There's the on deck hitter Roberto Alomar. That was a gift double there. Yeah. That one was that was legitimate there. Well, guys like him and Sprague done a lot of damage against the Sox, especially in the close ball games. Wow, close pitch. Good fastball by McDowell. Certainly get the feeling that Jack Way's looking and body language out there. He feels like he's getting squeezed. Payoff pitch. Base it. Here comes Sammy. Here comes Gonzalez. Here goes Flo. Caught. Yes. No, he didn't get it. Throw off to the first base side of home plate.
Well, let's take a look at the throw right now. Sammy, a little slide right there. The outfield appears to be a little bit wet today. The throw is to the first base side. Let's see if Gonzalez gets in there. It appeared that he was in there safely. Very strong throw by Sosa, but just a little bit offline. As you can see, if it's the third base side, he's got him dead. Right there, he appeared to have gotten in there. So, and Jack threw him a, a pitch that Devon could handle, something down. White, we've said it a hundred times, a good low ball hitter. So White ends up at second. Here's Alomar. Fastball high neck in. Blue Jays with three runs on four hits here in the top of the second. Splitter misses low in the count two and zero. Oh. Kirk, something might be wrong with Kirk's hand. Taking that glove off. We could maybe run that last pitch back, that splitter, and see if it hit it. All right, we mentioned that McDowell had also. Give it some body language. He felt Brinkman was squeezy. And let's take a look at the 2 2 fastball right here to Devon White. So a close pitch right there. He didn't get it. And evidently, Kirk says he is going to be able to continue as Mark Anderson out with him. May have caught that last pitch off the thumb. And give you a, a bone bruise. Let's take a look at this splitter. This is a split finger from McDowell. Well, yeah, then he kind of grimaces down there, as you can see, going to, on his knees. See that protection right there? He's got right on the thumb area in the glove hand. That is a hard plastic protection. Didn't get him on the thumb. It may have just pulled it out of joint a little bit. So here we go with a 2 0 count. Devon White at second. Three balls, no strikes. And Joe Carter on deck. First walk issued by McDowell. Oh, he'd love to have the pitch to Gonzalez back. Sammy Ellis, Charlie Huff over there. So here's Carter. Carter flying to Sammy Sosa last inning. Pops him up left side. Rains coming on. Makes the catch and it'll retire the side. But the Blue Jays do some damage, coming up with three runs on four hits. No errors, two men left after an inning and a half. They lead it three to one. Right now, let's pause for a break from our local affiliates. Some of the youngsters here this afternoon as we go to the bottom of the second inning. 
Three runs, five hits, no errors for the Blue Jays. A run on two hits and no errors for the Sox. Discussion right now with Greg Myers and Joe Brinkman at home plate. Karkovice is the scheduled leadoff hitter. And Jeff Torborg coming out to evidently Kark might be receiving some treatment. And while we have a moment, all of us here at Sports Channel would like to welcome our affiliate, Times Mirror Cable, and all their viewers in Lafayette, Indiana. Lafayette? Lafayette. Yes. yes. You see the skipper? It'll be Karkovice, Sosa, and Joey Cora. Sox got on the board last inning, a solid single to left by Lance Johnson. Matt Marullo over there has got his catching gear on. Wow. <laughs> Jeff looking up the runway there. I bet they're waiting for Pudge. You can book that one. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at our American League West standings. Coming into today's action, look at those Seattle Mariners. Eight games over the 500 mark, followed by Oakland, a half game back. Texas has been red hot. Two and a half back in California and Minnesota tied at 19 and 17. Then the Sox and Kansas City bringing up the rear seven games back. White Sox though only four games behind Seattle. And in sixth place American League East Boston and Toronto are tied for first place. Just a couple percentage points separating the two. Detroit four and a half games back even though they've been on a tailspin lately. Milwaukee all these teams just two teams over the 500 mark in the American League East. So, oh boy, there's some bad looking records going out there right now. And we'll run down some scores for you while we're waiting here. Seattle at New York, no score less than the bottom of the sixth inning. As you look at Carlton, Cleveland leading open four to two in the bottom of the fifth in Ohio, Tribe still hitting. California shutting out Baltimore, five nothing. That's in the top of the sixth at Memorial Stadium. Tigers hammering the Twins, eight to three, bottom of the fifth in Detroit. Brew Crew leading the Royals three to one bottom of the third at Kansas City and Boston has scored a run in the top of the first inning. They are still hitting against the Rangers and the National League Atlanta leading Pittsburgh four to nothing. That's in the bottom of the fourth down in Georgia Cardinals three Houston one top of the fourth in St. Louis San Diego shutting out Cincinnati three nothing top of the fourth at Riverfront and later on the Mets take on the Dodgers in L.A. and Montreal will be at San Francisco against the Giants and of course later tonight right here on Sports Channel it'll be game three Pittsburgh the Penguins against the North Stars at 7 p.m. right here on Sports Channel. So here's Pudge. Pudge hitting it 296. He was one for four in an RBI last evening. Todd Stottlemyre delivers outside. The bottom of the second is underway. Three runs, five hits. No errors for the Blue Jays. A run on two hits and no errors for the Sox. Carlton. 18 homers, 77 RBIs. Career against Toronto pitching. Outfield straight up. Gonzalez back on the grass at shortstop. But set for the 2 0 pitch. Three and nothing. Saddlemeyer, 26 years old. 
tomorrow. 6'3", 195 pounds. Looks just like his dad. The pie ball four. Series hitting at 250, five homers. He's knocked in 12. <laughs> Curveball misses in the count one and zero, oh, so that's five in a row. Delivered to home plate by Stottlemyer. Gives a sign to Ty that he will play behind Fisk. Slider in the count one and one. That's that good hard slider that we were talking about earlier. It really has a good tight rotation on it. it Worked hard to develop that. And now he's really been pitching well. Well, he got hung one right there, popped it up. Olerud. Well, he got away with one right there. Maybe Sammy didn't really pick up the spin, but it was right in his wheelhouse. Got to bring up the second baseman, Joy Cora. Who's your pick to click today? Marulo. I'll take Lance. Well, if you're going to take Lance, I'll take Big Frank. Cora takes a strike on the outside corner. Well, if you're going to take Big Frank, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take Marulo. <laughs> I'll take your. I'll see your Frank and raise you, uh, <laughs> Cora. Cora. A pie, ball and a strike. We got to start making these these little picks to click every day. A little something yeah. of, uh, interesting. Some oh, golf balls or something. Hit. Are you talking fast big bucks? No, no. Just, you know, golf three balls? golf balls, three golf balls every day. Okay. Sleeve of golf balls. We'll start well, it. Uh, we'll start it today. Well, but like, does your guy has to play better than my guy, or is it? Is he oh, I think we'll probably have it. If we can't agree, then we'll just call it a tie. It has to be a you know clear cut standout. Pitch foul out of play counts. And hangs at one and two. Okay. Hey, you. Hey, I want you to know that it's been very tough to collect from me in the past. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Believe me, that preceded you. <laughs> Budget first, a one-two pitch. Uh-oh. Oh boy. First so check that second strikeout for Stottlemyre. Good sinker right here. Watch the action. We've been throwing that fastball upstairs. But look at the late movement right there down and away from Joey to Joey. And he really overmatched him. So two strikeouts for Stoudemire, one walk, two outs for Ozzy. Ozzy hitting at 2.30. Pops this pitch up. Gonzalez making the call. And the catch. That'll do it. Strikes go very meekly here in the bottom of the second. And after two, Blue Jays lead it three to one. That's the story, top of the third inning. Sox with a run in the first, Blue Jays coming right back with three in the top of the second inning. Most of that damage done with two out. After two were out, I should say. Big hit was the two-run double by Rene Gonzalez. 
But a reminder that Milk Duds and Jolly Rancher Candies offer kids the chance to be a celebrity bad boy or girl. Winners receive great prizes and the chance to go on the field at Comiskey Park to meet White Sox players. Just look for details wherever Milk Duds and Jolly Rancher Candies are sold. Carlton Fisk comes into the ball game behind the plate as he hit for Karkovice last inning. So the Sox defensively now have Reigns in left, Lance Johnson in center, Sammy in right. Around the horn, Matt Marullo at first, Joy Cora at second, Ozzy at short, Robin Ventura at third, the battery of Carlton Fisk and the 25 year old right hander Jack McDowell. Well, here's a real good example, Hawk, of how Jeff Torborg has been somewhat limited with Frank Thomas not being able to go out there and play first base. You know, you got Marullo out there. If Karkovice is hurt and he's going to miss some games, you've got Matt Marullo certainly playing out of position there at first base. You put a guy like, uh, you know, like, like Frank, who has really improved defensively, he's back on the bench and it just ties Jeff's hands. He really can't use uh, Fisk in that role that, as the DH that he wanted to. Danny Pasquale has to play the field. And, just a lot of other guys are messed up by that situation. Yes, indeedy. But Big Frank says that he wants to try starting tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the big A. Here's Olaru. He popped up to Joey Cora's first trip. Takes the ball. Ball fouled away and the count one and one. Olaru just appears to be right in between. Yeah, he's gotten a lot of pitches right down the middle of the play. You know, heading the count too, where he's just not going after it, not taking a good hard swing like we've seen him in the past. Ball and two strikes. He's had some outstanding pitches to hit. He had some at Sky Dome and also Friday night here. He just didn't get to him. Doesn't look like he have that has that rhythm with him. He's kind of almost stationary at the plate. He's not moving anything, and just kind of going from a stop position. You can see right there, very defensive hitting. Jack a little upset in himself right there on that splitter. So the count hangs at one and two. Just got a piece of the high fastball. So the 22 year old Blue Jay first baseman. We mentioned a very young team in the field as you look at the on deck hitter Mark Witten. Olaruda 22 Alomar 23 Witten as you see the on deck hitter 24. Two balls two strikes. Myers 25. Ginelli 25. Devon White just 28. That's extremely deep in left center field for Olerud. And the count goes full. I see Lance way out there. So the payoff pitch. Tipped off the middle fist. What is that about? Ten or eleven pitches in this at bat. Well, he should know what he has by now. Throwing that, that heater. Looks like he wants the fastball again. Another souvenir.
He got him. He'll grab some bench. He had several good pitches to hit right there and just couldn't do anything with it. Third strikeout for Jack McDowell this afternoon. Fastball right there. Just below the belt, as you can see, and right down the middle of the plate. So, as we mentioned, John O was just scuffling a bit right now, not really taking that good aggressive swing. Looks real defensive and almost in between pitches. Here's Mark Witten. Started off last inning with a single into left field. To another count. Witten up the plate left handed reminds me of a of a big bake McBride with power. The way he stands up there with the movement, same stance. There's a strike, says Joe Brinkman. Mark out of Pensacola, Florida. See a Cardinal fan up there. Witten 6'3, 215. And the count two and two. Fourteen homers at Syracuse last year. Full count, but a lot of times, especially with a switch hitter, he's got to find out who he is. You move into the big leagues, <laughs> big transition. Some guys find out a little earlier than others. But when you've got the power, when you get the strength, he's going to hit some home runs. As he's gone, he'll grab some bench. Well, Jack McDowell, you know who you are with that pitch. Watch it. There's a good fastball inside. He really ties up Witten. We have seen Mark Witten make good contact. The balls that he's hit hard against the Sox have been down and out over the plate. This time he came inside and he could catch up with it. Greg Myers muscled a single back through the middle last inning. That put runners at the corners with nobody out. It's in the center field. Lance coming on. Ozzy going back. Drops the ball. That'll be a base hit. Just another blooper that falls in front of one of our outfielders and or behind the infield. There's a good effort by Ozzy. Outstanding effort. Boy, that's a base hit for. Uh, for Myers, but you know when you see all that hang time up there, Hawk, you just got to wonder, somebody's got to be standing over there, unless the uh, positioning is way off or the scouting report off on the people. I don't know if it's because of our club not hitting, which I don't think it is. You'd certainly like to think that the outfielders are not taking those at bats to the outfield with them. But our outfielders are just not getting the jump that we saw last year. No. And the only way you can get a good jump is by being into the ball game. And the only way, only way you can be into the ball game is doing it pitch by pitch. You can't take that pop up or that ground out to the outfield with you. As Mookie Wilson hits this one in the center field, Lance makes a call. He'll catch this one, and then he'll retire on the side. Nothing across there was a hit, nowhere as the man left. After two and a half, Blue Jays lead it three to one. Right now, let's pause for a break from our local affiliates. Three one Toronto, bottom of the third inning. Right now, let's check out our Chrysler Plymouth scoreboard for you. There you see the Yankees leading the Mariners two nothing in the seventh. Cleveland four Oakland two. That's in the sixth inning in Ohio. California hurting Baltimore seven zip sixth. Tigers over the Twins eight three in the fifth in Detroit. Milwaukee leading Kansas City 3 1 in the fourth at Royal Stadium, Boston over Texas 1 0 in the first at Arlington. Braves hurting the Buccos 5 0 fifth. San Diego 3, Cincinnati 0 in the fourth. Cincinnati. Wow, they have a hard time. Cardinals leading the Houston 3 1 in the fourth. And later on, New York at Los Angeles, Montreal at San Francisco, and the Cubs at Philadelphia. Break up the Braves. It'll be the top of the order for the Sox. Tim Raines, Lance Johnson, and Robin Ventura. 
takes it down low. See him hit the first pitch thrown by Todd Sotomayor in the bottom of the first to left field. Takes that one up high, and it's two and nothing. Tiger 8-3 lead over the Twins. Milt Kyler. For the home run off Jack Morris in the first inning. His first major league home run. And it was also a grand slam. Oh, wow. Morris's first game. That was at Tiger Stadium then, right? Mm -hmm. 3-0. Ball four. Right. So far the second inning in a row. Stottlemyer walks the leadoff hitter. Fisk in the second. Reigns here in the third. And here comes Lance Johnson. Lance one for one, a single, a stolen base, and has scored the only Sox run. Yankees leading Seattle 2 0 in the seventh. Two run homer by Mel Hall, his fourth of the year, of Brian Holman. Steve Howe now in the game for the Yankees. Lance takes a strike. Joe Slusarski and Rod Nichols were the pitchers as Oakland trails Cleveland four to two in the sixth inning. There's that slider and a count 0 and 2. Kirk McCaskill shutting out Baltimore. Started there was Jeff Ballard. No balls, two strikes to Lance. Gonzalez over to Alomar. They don't double him up. They get Reigns. Well, on the 0-2 pitch, pretty much routine right here. Not hit hard enough to turn to. Lance Johnson's hustling down the line. Close play. But the thing is, there's a hanging breaking ball right there, and Lance just pounds it into the ground. It looked like a high fastball at first look, but you can see the Sox not, you know, you got to start doing something. If the offense isn't going, you got to start stealing. You got their fastest guy on base. You got to be able to get in scoring position that way. Curveball strike to Ventura. Strikeout victim in the first inning, one of two registered by Todd Stottlemyre thus far. Von White almost straight up. Gap between White and Joe Carter and left. Robin evidently having some trouble picking up the pitch. Paul Stottlemyer. A couple of funny looking swings and his first at bat. Another one right there. Hope, certainly hope it's not his hand. Yeah. Lance on point. Throw it inside to count one and two with Big Frank on deck. Six and zero for the Blue Jays. One two and zero for the Sox. That's in the center field. The bottom line. And a reminder that Tuesday night, Game Two of the NBA playoffs. It'll start at six thirty with Sports Channel Report, followed at seven by. That game two, the Bulls versus the Pistons. Yes. Big Frank, single and an RBI. Breaking ball outside. Lance on point. Fakes does not go. 
flip that one up there, a little breaking ball. And the count. Two and nothing. It's Matt Marullo, the on deck hitter. Inside. Three balls, no strikes. Two out. Take a rip. Turn him loose. Darn right. right. It's like the one guy that has a chance. Ooh. See what Lance is going to do on a 3-1. He takes off. Slider strike, not in time. Second stolen base for Lance. That is number seven on the season. There's a good sharp breaking ball. Late breaker right there. And Myers, well, Lance was there. He had no chance right there. So it's three and two. Two out now to Frank Thomas. Comes Matt. He was jammed. His first at bat hit a grounder to the shortstop Rene Gonzalez. Now Roberto Alomar wants to come in and check things out with Stottlemyer and Greg Myers. Okay, about an hour and 15 minutes old. We're Already in the bottom of the third. Yep. <laughs> Wimpy, you said it is tough to play with any kind of intensity when you're going to play an average of three and a half hours oh every boy. nine in a game. So here's Matt. Mm. Takes a strike right there. A lot of standing around, especially about that game last night, of course, this afternoon already. Tough to maintain it. Back door him. And the count quickly, two strikes. No pizzazz, no pizzazz. That's what we had all last season. No pizzazz. Damn him again. This could be trouble right here. Gonzalez charges through. Not in time. Ball gets away from all the room. Here comes Lance. He'll score. As Big Frank's being waved around. Now here's the throw to home. Off the mark. Big Frank scores. Game tied at three. Yes. see two cheaper runs scored in your life than right here. Look at the jam sandwich right here. Like he hit it with his knuckles. Gonzalez comes up to make the throw. It's in the dirt, but Matt appeared to have already beaten it out. And then Olerud gets the ball to throw home, and Frank Thomas is in there. And Stottlemyre saves the ball from going into the dugout with a great dive, as you can see right here. Bad throw. Oh. We'll take it. <laughs> that shades of 1990. That's right. Two walks and a jam shot. That wasn't even a shank, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that is the cheapest hit of the year right there. <laughs> I'll take one. We'll take it. Here's Pudgley. He drew a walk, hitting for Karkovice, leading off last inning. Here's a quick slider from Stottlemyre. They have not put an error up there yet, but <laughs> they've got to put. Let me see. No, just one error is all there is going to be. Yeah, on uh, oh, that'd no. be on, on Gonzalez. On the throw on by the Gonzalez. Throw. Yeah, because yeah, Big Frank was going to score. 
There's the curveball over. And then the count quickly 0 and 2. Boy, Matt Marua will be the butt of a lot of jokes, but he gets a. Is he get an RBI on that play? No. No, he wouldn't. Now he scored from second. I was just thinking, good grief. Oh, got good piece right there. 25 year old catcher Greg Myers mercy. You can hear it up here. Yeah. Pudge. Oh boy. Look like on his hand. Right on the knuckles of his swing. Ooh, hand. Boy just didn't get it out of the way. Well, we've seen that happen to Carlton Fisk a couple years ago in New York on a foul tip. Couldn't get it. Didn't get it out of the way. Put him on a disabled list. Yeah, it looks like his hand is is blocked momentarily. And then as he drops his glove, it gets him right in the hand. Oh boy! That hurts. I'll tell you, Matt Marulo's hand doesn't doesn't hurt quite as bad as that. After that. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it off. John. Well, this inning, if you just you know. tuned in, this inning started with a walk to Reigns. And Lance Johnson hit into a force play. Then after Ventura flying to center field, two out, Lance at first, and a 3 1 count on Big Frank. Lance steals second. Big Frank walks. <laughs> and then Matt, Matt went off the thumbnail. You see Pat Borders down in the Blue Jay pen starting to loosen up. You know Matt hit that ball so bad. I'll bet he didn't even crack his bat. Gonzalez threw it away and both Lance and Big Frank scored. And I'll tell you a good job right there. A good job by Terry Bevington. You're right. Yeah, making Big Frank come all the way around and you know, taking the shot. I thought that Olerud with a decent throw right there from just the way the play was developing. Was going to get it. Meanwhile, he threw Easy. it poorly. So big yes for Bevington. Well, the way the team's been swinging the bat, quite honestly, and especially in close situations with two outs, heck, you're just as good a shot at uh, scoring from third base as you would have a, a guy driving them in in the next situation. So Boomer got those two runs across, and it's a 3-3 ball game. Todd Stottlemyre has got to be wondering what happened. But those two walks always come back to haunt you. And it did right there. Let's take another look at the play. Now watch this pitch. Watch man. Ow. That ball is so soft, it's got a lot of backspin on it. I like the wedges like that. There you see Gonzalez coming in. The bad throw to Old Root bounces off. Now Lance is going to score easy, but here's where Bevington really made a good play and keeping Big Frank hustling hard around third base. And a terrible throw by Olerud, and look at Todd Sotomayor with that outstretched dive, saving it from going into the dugout. So the Sox picked up two runs on that. Boomer's telling him what he was thinking. See, I knew that they knew that I knew, and that's why I sent him. So here's Pat Borders. We're early in this ball game, only the third inning, and. The Blue Jays only carry two. They really have had any reason to uh, to go with a three catcher system. I don't know who their backup be. Uh, and Spray had some knee pads on down there. Oh, okay. A reminder: you can, or shin guards, I should say, uh, you can plan a special pregame party below right field, right here at Comiskey Park, at the Kingsford Charcoal Patio area. Party packages are available for groups of 20 to 1,500 people. So for more information, just call the Sox sales office at 312-924-1000. Get out in that area, you'll smell it, and you will just go right to it. The Bertucci boys with all those ribs, chicken, and burgers out there. Mercy. Yep. So here's Pudge. 0-2 the count. Started him off with a slider, then came back with a curveball. So indeed, indirectly, both walks this inning from Sottlemyre have scored. That's off his shin. He'll make the play. And that's the third out. But the Sox tie it up with two runs on just one hit. One error, one man left after three, tied at three.
There you have it, a 3-3 tie. And as we go into the top of the fourth inning already this afternoon at Comiskey Park, we've seen a little bit of everything. A lot of pitches thrown up by both of these starters. We were looking for a good pitching matchup this afternoon. And the Sox really haven't been hitting the ball hard against Todd Stottlemyre, but those three walks have really come to hurt him, especially the two he issued in the bottom half of the third inning. Sox did not hit a ball past the infield, aside from the fly ball out by Robin Ventura. Still were able to score two runs due to the real heady coaching of Terry Bevington at third base. And the bad throw by Gonzalez certainly helped that. So it's a 3-3 tie as we go to the fourth inning. Jack McDowell will face Ray Gianelli. Ray hitting 190, 0 for 1 to this afternoon. First ball swing, a weak pop-up left side. Ozzie's there. He makes the catch, one out. All right, one pitch, one out here in the fourth inning. And that'll bring up Rene Gonzalez. Gonzalez, one for one. Certainly the big hit of this ball game. Double to left center with two out in the second inning. Driving home two runs. So he just wants to put a little delay of the game tactic right now. He'll be at the at the plate soon. You know what I'd like to see, Hawk? I'd like to see them initiate a rule where that batter's got to run up to the home plate after the uh, previous hitter has gotten out or gotten on base or something. They just take too long getting up to the plate nowadays. Delay of game well, penalty. Start a petition, Wimpy. I'd like to see baseball go back to like college form when you were a little kid where you hustled in and out, ran up to the plate, got things going in a hurry. I think it, and it would add to the intensity level of both teams. I will start a petition. 1-0 pitch, fastball swing, fouled straight back. That's about how many signatures you're going to get on it. One. Oh. <laughs> well, I just think that's the thought that really counts. I agree. I mean, there's no reason for him to be out. Catcher, I can understand having to take off his equipment and stuff. There's no reason for a guy to be out there, have the, everybody wait for a minute for him. Fastball. Fouled right side. He was behind that one. Hit the split finger pitch. It was a hanger by McDowell in the second inning for the two runs. Hitting 226 and about 220 of it has been against the White Sox. Fastball upstairs. Two and two now. McDowell has struck out four this afternoon already and has walked one. When he's made a bad pitch, though, he has paid, giving up six already. Got him with the high heat. Maybe that's why it took him so long to get up there. Not a real good swing at this high fastball. No chance. Right by him. So McDowell gets his fifth strikeout, two out, nobody on, and that'll bring up Devon White. Devon struck out leading off the ball game and had an RBI single in the second inning. Look at this. Well, last year he was had a brutal year for, for California, 217, 289, actually 292 as he stands in there now. 245. Got outstanding ability. Always felt like if he was a little bit more patient at the plate, he could do remarkable things. Has good power, too, especially downstairs. A good low ball hitter. Sox outfield playing deep, shading him slightly to left. And he can't catch up with a fastball. Count even at one. Ball knocks him back. In 1987, Devon set a an Angels rookie record with 103 runs scored. Has not approached that level since. Really, up until this year, he was actually on a downslide. Only 28 years old, should be in the prime. 
There's a strike right on the outside corner. That evens the count at two. Two and two. Wants the fastball. He got it. Line shot up the middle. Oh, backhand dive by Joey Cora. Can't catch up with it. So Devon White on at first base. Ozzy with the throw. He's in there. So White now two for three on the afternoon. Didn't hit it real hard, but it was in the right spot. Now you see the effort by Joey Cora. He almost caught up with it. Well, just got behind him as Jack McDowell tried to throw this fastball by him, but downstairs, see right there, it wasn't in enough. You got to throw him inside with that fastball. You see, it barely gets through. Perfect positioning. Now you got that base stealing threat with Devon White on at first base. Carlton Fisk behind the plate and Jack McDowell. We have said this a number of times. Not that good at holding runners on. So Devon, he's five for eight in stolen bases so far this season. And with two out, you would think he'd be off to the races in one of these first couple of pitches. Alomar, one for one, he singled and walked. 267 hitter as he stands in there. There he goes. Throw, no. So Devon steals his sixth base of the season. There he goes. You see, he looks up to see if the ball is put into play. The straight leg slide, and he is in there. Great quickness, Devon White. The pitch out. And still not able to get him. Good execution, just too much speed right there for the Sox to handle. So Alomar hitting now with a one ball, no strike count. Whoa, there's a fastball gets away. White will just cruise into third base. So a runner at third now with two out, 2 0 count on Alomar. Wow, way out of the zone right there. Pass ball is what it's ruled. It's tough to get up there on a 90 mile an hour fastball for the catcher. But Jack really released that way early. Steps off. And Alomar will hit now with a 2 0 count. Sox outfield very deep. Pretty much straight away. Fakes the bunt. 3 0. Two eighty six hitter with runners in scoring position, as you can see. Ten for thirty five in that category. Three oh. Fastball right there. Joe Carter, the on deck hitter. Alomar 329 on base percentage so far this year hitting in that number two spot in the order has walked 14 times check that 15 as he takes ball four upstairs so Joe Carter who has been the best RBI man in the major leagues over the last five years with 545 will get a chance to drive home another here with runners at the corners and two out. Alomar with nine stolen bases and 11 temp attempts at first base. Carter's 0 for 2 on the afternoon, fly to right and then fly to left. Ah, the old double fake trick. Fish weren't biting there, so. We'll get back to business and get to Joe Carter. They are playing him to pull. Tim Raines guarding the line in left field. You can see a 298 hitter with runners in scoring position for Carter. Lance way over there in left center. Big gap in right center. 
Pitch fastball way up and in ball one. And there's that defensive look. Very deep. Sox outfielders playing much deeper than they have in the past, especially in this ballpark. Nobody's going. Jack very persistent. He's gotten three or four guys over the last year or so with that play. Coming inside again. He's trying to pitch Carter inside. That's the proper way to attack him. Of course, he's way in off the plate right there, and Carter's not going to budge at those two pitches. So he's in the great hitting position right now, 2 0. Oh. We're in a 3 3 tie here at Comiskey Park. Good speed on the base pass. What great execution by Robin Ventura and Jack McDowell. We'll take another look at that play when we come back. But a big pickoff play by the White Sox. Oh, Lordy, no runs on one hit. We pause now for a break from our local affiliates. That last pickoff play by Jack McDowell. He'd been faking that throw over the third base and going over the first. He caught Devon White off guard right there. Robin Ventura, perfect timing with Jack McDowell. So they pick off Devon. And out of the inning, out of a jam, 2-0 count on Carter, too. Sammy Soso lead things off in the bottom of the fourth inning. Good curveball by Stottlemyre on the outside corner. Sammy 0 for 1, popped to third in his only at bat. That was in the second inning. Hitting 248 as he stands in there. Good pitch again on the corner. Looks like he took something off his fastball. Sammy down on the count 0 and 2. Look, Stottlemyre had a tough luck third inning. Made a great pitch on Marulo and it cost him two runs. Slider got him. Look at that good hard slider. Sammy may disagree with that call. Certainly was a nasty pitch. Something you don't want to hit on a regular basis, but it's an 0 2 pitch going for the corner. Apparently, he got it, according to Joe Brinkman. Three strikeouts, three walks for Stoudemire this afternoon. That'll bring up Joey Cora swinging at a breaking ball and fouling it foul down the first baseline. But you just don't see that play very often, that pickoff at third. Of oh, the ace, Devon White. Did you see the reaction of Jack right there? He was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a strike on the corner. He just loves it. Jack, a very intense, intense individual. Yeah. You wonder, I've never seen anybody work on that play. Have you? No, it never works. And yeah, never. Um, I'll tell you what, he faked over there twice. Everybody in, in the league now knows that Jack, that's one of his favorite plays. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> Devon's sitting over there and saying, oh, no, not again. And boom. There's a ground ball. Alomar will throw out Cora, so there's two down for the Sox in the fourth. That's such, such a, an example of a great execution right there, or is it an indictment on today's base runners? <laughs> really? Ozzie Guillen will hit with two out. Breaking ball misses outside. Sure is an exciting play when it works. I don't know. I can't remember in the last couple of years seeing anybody just trying to pick off a guy at third base. Pitcher Wimpy, to third. I'll tell you what, I don't remember. There's a shot face oh, Ozzy, right back through the middle. Yes. But I don't remember. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a guy picked off third? 
No, unless you call the catcher. Oh, I'm not talking. I'm talking about the, the pitcher. No. Me either. I don't. Think I think that's the first time I've ever seen a guy. <laughs> As I'm saying, I don't know if it's a great play by McDowell or just a, a, a terrible commentary on base running. <laughs> I don't know. Devon White, uh, you know, has been a superb base runner, and I'm sure that he was shocked into that because Jack had fake throwing over the third and gone over to first base. Now that's worked a few times for him. That's the first time that I can ever recall in the major leagues. I may have seen it in the minor leagues, but in yeah. the major leagues, a guy getting picked off third base by the pitcher. Uh huh. There goes Ozzy to throw to second. He's in there. So the third stolen base. For the White Sox this afternoon, Ozzie Guillen in there safely. I think he got these guys a little bit off guard. Ozzie with a good, good jump. Ozzie now with five out of six on the season. You got a breaking pitch to go on. You see the throw off to the shortstop side of second base. And no chance for Gonzalez. All right. Big play there by Ozzie. So a two out base hit. Turned that into a double. So Timmy Raines up there now with a 1 1 count. Good speed at second. Sox now with four hits on the afternoon. Breaking ball inside, hammered foul. So Tim Raines up there now with a 1 2 count. 223 hitter now on the season. Here's a final from Tiger Stadium. Detroit breaks their eight game losing streak, beating the Twins and Jack Morris eight to three. Milt Kyler with a grand slam homer in that ball game in the first inning off Morris. So Jack did not have a very good homecoming. Going back to his old stomping grounds where he has been the Tiger leader for so many years. See Tim hasn't been real effective with runners in scoring position. Last year hit 323 with runners on base. There's a pitch fastball jams him. Just got a piece of it over towards the Blue Jay dugout. And Ozzy trying to get that good jump. Always hustling. That's big too. If, if Tim gets an infield single, Ozzy can just keep buzzing around third base and score. He might pull that. Put that in our playbook. Oh yeah. Pick off at third, and then we haven't exactly sandwiches. laid a bombardment down on him today. No. <laughs> a couple balls went to the outfield. There's a ground ball right side. Alomar will make the play and throw out Reigns. So the Sox failed to score here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. They strand one, a base hit and a stolen base by Ozzie again. After four, it's 3 3. Let's take a look at our Franklin batting leaders. Wally Joyner from Stone Mountain, Georgia, tearing it up at 391 for the Angels. We'll see him tomorrow. Brian Downing, Hindu, David Henderson's got to be the MVP for the first two months of the season. And Edgar Martinez of Seattle. In the National League, it's Hal Morris, Craig Biggio, Fred McGriff, and Tony Gwynn. They're pretty much even right there. And we're back at Comiskey Park. Top half of the fifth inning. Joe Carter who was standing standing at home plate got to be a bit perturbed. He was standing there with a 2 0 count when Devon White was picked off a of third base and takes the fastball on the outside corner. So he's down now 0 1 leading off the inning. Curveball misses inside 1 and 1. I've seen fights for less than that. What's that? Oh man. I saw a couple of good ones. <laughs> For the A's, we had a you know we had a rowdy bunch over there anyway. A couple of times somebody bit the plate. There's a gas right there from Jackson, and a count one and two. Be a man on you know first and third, and somebody try to steal second base and get thrown out. Yeah. 
I'm well, saying they would go at it in between. I've gone at it with a couple guys in between. It. <laughs> well, back when you were with the A's, there's a fastball fouled straight back. They didn't have many base runners, so I can understand why you guys. Oh, well, we had a good club. I was a first baseman. Dick Green was a second. Burt Campanaris was a short. We had Sal Bando at third. We had uh, Joe Rudy in left. Rick Mundy in center. Reggie Jackson in right. How many games you guys win? Oh, we were young. We didn't win many of them. Well, we had a lot of base runners. Oh, okay. we just didn't know. What, we just had to have the old proverbial lasso. <laughs> Somebody had a little lasso on us. That is. That's a very impressive lineup you just mentioned. There's a one-two pitch fastball jammed him, but he fouls it straight back. Well, that was that same club that went on out to Oakland, you know, and won the five consecutive divisional titles, three consecutive world championships. Yeah. They just grew up, you know. We at that time we we all knew at that point we had a, an outstanding club that was going to be a great sure. one day. Was Catfish Hunter there? Yeah, Fish was there. Wow. Lou Krause. Oh yeah, we had Lou Krause, Chuck Dobson, Blue Moon Odom. Jeez. Raleigh Fingers. Well, they were all kids. They couldn't have oh, been yeah. more than 20 years old, those guys. Well, I was 20. Uh, we were all young. If you were 20, they'd have to be 10. <laughs> <laughs> Pop up to left field. <laughs> Range there, there's one out. You're in the fifth. <laughs> Maybe he was 21. And they were 11. <laughs> That's better. Well, McDowell gets the first out here in the fifth inning. Maybe that play at third base will do something. Get that momentum going for the White Sox. Wimpy, you miss as many three footers as I have and have as many strikeouts on sliders <laughs> as I had. You look a little older yourself, kid. Now this white hair I have has no indication of what I've been through, right? You've had that since I've known you. Well, it was great. Kenny Gallardo was like that white. too. Tony, Tony was prematurely gray. One-zero pitch to Olerud downstairs, so he's ahead in the count now, two and zero. I'll tell you, Jack, that really pumped him up. Oh boy, man, did that pump him up. Two old fastball uh -oh. hit deep to right field. This one's way out of here. Maybe it pumped him up too much. Oh my. There's that short quick swing by Oru. That's the first time that he has really put the kind of swing on it that he has. He has been, as Webby said earlier, he's been very defensive. Here you get the 2 0 count. He's strong. Right there. Well, he had that same pitch a couple times last at bat and fouled him off. He did not miss this one. Fifth homer for Olaru. What a difference the count makes. He was behind that very pitch, hitting everything to the left side of the field. Oh my. That one's behind. There we go. He's coming after him. Oh, geez. Wow. Boy, did he. McDowell took a shot right there. Mercy. Lord have mercy. Boy, it's getting bad out there now. Boy, he took a shot. Jack McDowell really took a blow right yeah, there. He took Mark Witten. Big time right hand. Yeah, it looked like he cut it pretty good. This, that's Devon White. going to require some stitches.
You'll watch him. He'll fake one time, then all of a sudden he'll come over with that right hand. Right there. Now here it comes. Bud saw what was going on right there. He was going to get there just as quickly as he possibly could. There you see the pitch way behind Witten. And he's off to the race. There's really no chance for Fist to get up there because he was off as soon as the ball got behind him. Robin got there first one. Pledge was trying. He came, Pledge came right out of the gate trying to get there as quick as he could, which yeah. is catcher's responsibility. And Frank also, you can see right in the middle of that pile, Frank Thomas. Of course, Frank had to come from the dugout. You know, in that situation right there, you really can't blame Mark Whitten. Can't blame Mark Whitten. He, you know, he didn't hit the home run. All of a sudden, Jack throws at him, which I don't blame Jack. If that's the way he felt like he had to do, then go ahead sure. you know, and do it. But you yep. also, you turn that page over one time. You know, you can't blame Mark Whitten for defending his territory, his rights at all. Yeah. Well, there you see, Pudge wasn't aware that Whitten was going after him. With that good speed, Whitten is out there in, a, in a, just a dash. Oh, man. Fortunately, Robin Ventura got there before he was able to finish him off. Talking about a big guy with speed and power, 6'3", 215, Mark Whitten. Jack wants, Jack wants to continue. I don't know if he's been thrown out or not. We're looking at talking to Joe Brinkman. They evidently didn't cut him, just put a mouse on him. Didn't look like Whitten hit him with his fist. Looked like he hit him with a, the side of his hand. Yeah. If he'd have hit him with his fist with that kind of a blow, he'd have gone down. Yeah. And yeah, he could have hurt him bad. Yeah, it looked too. like it just a slap. Well, unfortunately, these things happen. Yeah, it looks like he's gone. I'll tell you. You're looking at a guy right there, Jack McDowell, who's really coming into his own as a pitcher and as a consummate competitor. I mean, you know, he didn't, again, he threw, he got behind Oleru with the 2 0 count, threw the fastball, and decided he wanted to go after Witten, which is okay if that's what you want to do. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, though, he is a competitor. Yeah. So now Ken Patterson will come on and he will have all the time that he needs to get ready. So, Breaking the action right here at Comiskey Park. It's the top of the fifth inning. Blue Jays lead at four to three. And we'll take a break and be back right after this. All right, let's look at it one more time. What started there, you see Mark Whitten with a good shot right there. Didn't hit him with his fist. Looked like he caught him with a butt of his, the heel of his hand. Here comes Pudge. And there's Devon White running into Pudge's behind. That may have been the worst blow of the day. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> but Southpaw Kid Patterson is on. I just hope that Jack, well, evidently Jack's eyes okay. He wanted to resume. Evidently he was thrown out by Joe Brinkman. I tell you though, Wimpy. I mean this. Jack McDowell's becoming one of my favorite, one of my favorite players. He's tough, you know. That gum right, he's tough. He is tough. Jack is a competitor out on that hill. He wanted to stay in there. No way he wanted to come out of this ball game. Yeah, and it, it looks like in a couple hours or so he may not even be able to see out of that eye, is his yeah. left eye. And uh, of course he probably was ejected for the pitch. Yeah. And uh, you know, we we're talking that about it between the breaks. You know, you, you can't really fault either one of those guys. No, in you situation. can't fault with neither. Can't no, it wasn't either. You know, Jack decided he wanted to throw, and you, if that's the case, then uh, you can't blame Mark Witten for going out to the hill, protect his turf. But Jack McDowell is really. Last year he started, and we talked about it then. He grows every time he goes out there on that mound. He's just growing and growing. He got a chance to be an outstanding pitcher. Oh, no doubt about Big it. Big time. Yeah. 
So Kenny Williams will come in and hit for Witten. Obviously, Witten has been ejected from the game as well. Well, Ken takes his warm-up tosses here. Let's check out some Check out the Major League standings for you in the National League. You did it earlier in the American League. There you see the Dodgers on top of Braves. Braves, of course, beating Pittsburgh 5 to 1, bottom of the seventh this afternoon. Cincinnati a game back. Cincinnati trailing San Diego 3 to 1 in the seventh at Riverfront. San Diego, Houston, and San Francisco. Over in the East, there you see the Pirates getting beat by Atlanta 5 to 1. The Mets. St. Louis, Philadelphia starting late. Philadelphia 18 and 18. Wow. What were they, yeah. nine games under when Fergosi came over? Something like that, yeah. Followed by the Cubs and Montreal tied two games under, six games back. So everything now, Patterson has concluded his warm up tosses. Everything has settled down. It said it might have been the Worst blow of the whole affair. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if Devon White goes out to play back in this inning. But Ken Patterson is the new Sox pitcher, and the Mariners finally lose only their second loss in their last 14 ball games as the Yankees, behind that two run homer by Mel Hall, they hung on for a 3 to 2 victory. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're in the top of the fifth inning, one out. Sox trailing by. One here, four to three. Kenny Williams will hit for Mark Witten, who was ejected from the ball game. It's like fastball away, the pitch, jam shot. I guess. First base side, Marulo there for the easy out. Two down. Some Jack McDowell works four and a third innings, gives up four runs. They were earned on eight hits. Walk two, and he struck out five. Pat, to Pat Pat Borders, the Blue Jay hitter, with two out here in the fifth inning. He's one for two. He singled in the second inning and struck out in the third, hitting 235 on the year now. Four for eight in the series with a double and four runs. So Borders. Boy, he was hitting way in those one one hundreds when we saw him last week at Skydome. So he has really picked up the pace in that hitting department, hitting at 235. There's a foul ball right side. So Patterson, who pitched in Baltimore in Boston, had that real good fastball that particular night. So Sox need him to. Do that good job in long relief, something like Wayne Edwards gave him yesterday. Held him in check, although the offense didn't do a whole lot. This is just a one-run ball game right now. Plenty of time left. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got five big at-bats left against Todd Stottlemyre. And there's a call third strike. A good curveball catches the outside corner. So after all that, one run scores on the homer by Olerud. It's 4-3 Toronto. We pause now for a break from our local affiliates. There's a look at the White Sox bench. Jeff Torborg and Carlton Fisk talking over what happened that last half inning. And during that break, Joe Brinkman went out to talk to the Blue Jays starting pitcher, Todd Stottlemyre, who would like nothing more right now than to deck a couple of the White Sox hitters. He's a tough cookie too, Todd Stottlemyre. Lance Johnson will lead it off. It'll be Johnson, Ventura, and Big Frank. Here in the bottom of the fifth, four, eight, and one for the Blue Jays, three, four, and zero oh for the Sox. Janelli in on the grass at third. Ola Root halfway at first. As the count nothing and one. Lance has single, stole a base. That was in the first inning. Scored a run. In the third inning, hit into a force play. Stole another base. So Lance now with seven stolen bases on the season. Alfield swung around to the left. And the count quickly 0 and 2.
Sox with a run in the first. Toronto came back with three in the top of the second. Sox tied it up with three. Uh, checked at two in the third. And then the home run by Olerud precipitated the brawl out there. And that's it. 4-3 Toronto. Ball and two strikes. The slider coming in. You know, sometimes when the club has been in a doldrum or a bit of a funk like the Sox have, sometimes a, a fight is just the thing the doctor ordered. And, I, and you know you don't like to see any, anything, but sometimes it happens that way. It turns, it starts the juices flowing and the yep. adrenaline. And very few guys have ever gotten hurt in one of those things, really. Well, you might get, you know, you might get uh, a couple of punches. Yeah. You might get your neck really wrenched, some <laughs> especially if you're at the bottom of the pile. Too. Yeah, that's a pie count full to Lance. Well, Jack's probably saying right now, I've been beaten up by guys smaller than that Witten. Well, he took a pretty good blow there. He will bounce back though. Pretty soon, Jack's gonna be one of those guys, and every time he goes out there, you just know. There they Shot in the center field. Here comes Devon White. Lance hit it hard. Lance is really having some good at bats in this series. Not showing a whole lot, but if you keep hitting those line drives, he will get some results. He hit that ball very hard. But Devon White gets such a good jump there in center field. He made that play look easy. Here's Ventura. Robin has struck out and he's fly to center. Curveball strike. We're getting back to Jack, he's going to be, he still has to learn a couple of things yet out there, you know, to himself, to himself. He's got to prove a couple of things to himself out there as far as sometimes. There's a base hit into left center field. But once he does that, and he acquires that last little bit of experience and knowledge, you know how that you need to have to be the kind of pitcher that he can be. When he gets there, he can be outstanding. No doubt. Good job of hitting right here by Robin Ventura. He really got his hands up above that ball right there. Got on top of that high fastball, something Robin has not been able to do in the last few days. So here's Frank. Big Frank has single, knocked in a run, walked, scored a run. Takes it low. One thousand fifteen in attendance. What job? Oh my! I would say this. I would say even if Todd is a good competitor, the last man you want when you're behind is number thirty-five. Yep. Sure looked like a purpose pitch right here. Yeah, it did. Way up and in. Any question about it? Ball's chasing him inside. I didn't really see if he got a signal from the catcher. Yeah. Big Frank letting his over exuberance right there. <laughs> Juice takes a bad breaking ball. Yeah. Stein, you better you better get after somebody else, my man. Lays off that breaking ball. Here's where you'd like to see Frank hit one right back through the middle and just hit him right between the three and the O. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just a bullet. Well, we've seen him hit a number of line shots up the middle, which is basic Frank Thomas in, in his good swing. We look at Robin at first base, three and one. Will he be going? I doubt it. That's ball four. Two runs in the third inning. There were two out. 
He got jammed, hit a little soft ground ball that did not. Gonzalez charged. Threw it away at first base, and both runs scored. Here's Pat Borders going out to talk to Stottlemyre. What I can understand a little bit here, Wimpy, is that, I mean that Brakeman went out and talked to Stottlemyre. I don't think there's any question that pitch to Frank as far as it was inside, right at his head there. Yeah, it was a purpose pitch. All of a sudden he throws McDowell out. Why the hell didn't he throw out Stottlemyre? Yeah. Both teams obviously got warnings on that. Come on, Matt. There's yeah. a base hit in the right field. Here comes Robin. He rounds third base. Here comes Williams with the throw. And look at Robin trying to run him over. He holds on to it. He's out. What an effort by Robin Ventura. Oh, my. These two clubs are really starting to get after one another. Boy, you're not kidding. Boy, he gave a, he delivered a blow because he had all that momentum going forward. On borders, a terrific throw home by Kenny Williams. He's got a strong arm. Witten, one of the better throwing arms in the in the world. Williams, I know. Kenny Williams right here. Robin going all the way, and the throw all the way in the air, as you can see, and he's waiting. Didn't quite get there, Robin. That's his only play. He got the ball waiting for him. Try and run him over. He couldn't knock the ball out of him. Witten had been in there previously. He's got one of the strongest throwing arms around, but Kenny Williams still throws well. See right there? Bang, that's contact. Well, he's got the plate blocked with a foot up there. Robin did exactly what he's supposed to do. If he's going to cover the plate without the ball. Also, McDowell and Robin are very, very close friends. A little, little bit in that slide right there for Jackson as well. There you see his foot out in front of the plate. Yep. Well, he could deliver a blow right there. We saw earlier that Greg Myers had gone out of the ball game because of that hand injury. And now Borders, a little woozy there at home plate after that collision. You had mentioned that Ed Sprague, who had played third base in a number of games against the Sox, originally started the season as a catcher. So he was brought up, so he would be the guy that they would obviously go to in the pinch here. But I'm sure that the Blue Jays and Cito Gasson want Borders in there with his experience. I'll tell you what, an excellent job by Pat Borders of hanging on to oh, that ball after, that, after Robin just absolutely lowered the, lowered the boom on him. Yeah, that was, that was some contact, but it's certainly a, a very legal play. Well, look at Borders foot. As Robin comes in, he sees now he's going to have the ball before he gets there. Borders got his foot in front of the plate at this point. Robin says no slide. Uh -uh. Yeah. He's going to be out anyway. He laid him out, but I'll tell you what, Borders is a tough cookie too. He held down to that ball and got the out at home. So the Sox failed to tie the game up. My goodness. Well, we have seen some excitement, some, whew, some adrenaline falling in this game. Driving originally looked like he was going to slide if there was a play. All of a sudden, he saw Borders had the ball, redirected his action, came back up and went into him. And he did what you're supposed to do, try to knock the ball out of his hand, out of his glove. So Big Frank is at second. And Matt at first. So these two teams next meet. <laughs> 
<laughs> July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. That'd be interesting. Well, this could be one of those, you know, things where you're starting some bl bad blood between the two teams. There's, there's, no, there's no question about it. It's yeah. there already. Yeah. Well. Here's Bo Jackson, Alex Fernandez, and Ken Patterson, who's in the ball game right now. Scooter. And Danny Pasqua. So Borders is going to stay in there. She look at the Sox bench. Oh, boy. Trainer out there is Gaston talking to Joe Brinkman. He was talking very, very hard to Brinkman just after that play developed. After Robin came out and they saw Borders was down and they went out there. It's going to stay in there. Yep. So a good play by the Toronto catcher hanging on to that baseball after that terrific shot by Robin Ventura. Well, it's just a case of great execution by everyone right there. Kenny Williams got that ball in a hurry, made it an outstanding throw home, and Robin did what he had to do. Borders did what they had, what he had to do, and it was just a real fine play. Well, the two out runners at first and second now, and the Sox still trailing by one. So here's Pudge. Well, you don't see this much action in the WWF, do you? Jake Frank at second, Matt at first. Hughes the breaking ball foul over the Blue Jay dugout. Well, we got to invite Mike Adamley over for American Gladiators. Isn't half this tough. <laughs> Carlton, 0 for 1. He's walked and he's bounced back to the pitcher. When I say bounced back, he hit one off his shin. Curveball and the count 0 and 2. 4 8 and 1 for the Blue Jays, 3 6 and 0 for the Sox. As I said earlier, this might be just what the doctor ordered. Straight up for Fisk. As he's gone. And it'll retire the side. Now they cross a couple of hits. No errors, two men left after five here at Comiskey Park. Rubber match of this three game set. Blue Jays lead it four to three. This copyrighted program is presented by the authority of Major League Baseball and the Chicago White Sox. It is intended for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written permission of Major League Baseball, the Chicago White Sox, and Sports Channel Chicago is strictly prohibited. 4-3 Blue Jays here in the top of the sixth inning. Southpaw Ken Patterson. In relief of Jack McDowell, who was thrown out of the ball game by home plate umpire Joe Brayman. There you see Cito Gaston talking to Stottlemyre over there. If you're sitting at home thinking about flipping the switch around, there's going to be some more excitement in this game for it's over. You can book him. <laughs> Mookie Wilson deleted off. He's 0 for 2. It'll be Wilson, Janelli, and Gonzalez. One and one to count. Out 
to play right side of ball and two strikes to the 35 year old switch hitting veteran. There you see the Angels hurt the Orioles 10 to 2. California with that 12 and 7 record. On the road and of course the Sox will board their charter after this afternoon's ball game. Yes he did. He'll grab some bench. Good help here by KP. He struck out Porters to end the, the fifth inning with a good backdoor curveball. Now watch this one. This one's breaking down and into Mookie. Oh boy. Gotcha. So here's the third baseman Gianelli. He struck out and he's popped to short. Up left side in foul territory. Reigns now as a win took that ball. Makes the catch. Two gone. That'll bring up the shortstop Renee Gonzalez. He doubled in a couple of runs in the second inning. Turned out to be a real big base hit after Jack looked like he was going to get out of a first and third. Nobody out situation. That's one pitch that Jack would just dearly love to have back in this game. And Jackson struck him out in the fourth. Now feel bunched a bit, shaded to the right. Breaking ball on inside. Side and the count two and oh. Three balls, no strikes with Devon White on deck. Says Joe Brinkman. Oh, the sun has come out. 41,015 paid, 44,149 in the house today. A lot of Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts in attendance. Yes, to the White Sox, as that's a high ball four. So the third walk issued by Sox pitching, first by Patterson, and here's White. He struck out, a couple of singles, RBI, and a stolen base. Nothing in one. A reminder there are still a few individual game suites available for the Oakland series. That's May 31st through June for a uh, third. Let's call the White Sox sales office at 312 924 1000 for more information. Let's see. A, Whoa. Wow. Cleveland 3 and 13 at home. Ball and two strikes. We haven't had too many sunshiny day games over here, Hawks. It'll be interesting to see when those shadows start arriving around home plate, making it that much tougher to see the ball. Two balls, two strikes. Hello. Outfield playing white to pull. Jammed him, ate him up. Over by the photographer as well. And the count hangs at two. So 
Well, as we showed you earlier, the Yankees beat the Mariners 3 2. California beat Baltimore 10 2. A's over Cleveland 9 4. Tigers beat the Twins 8 3. Milwaukee leading Kansas City 4 1. Bottom of the ninth at Royal Stadium. Robin to Hopper. We'll go over to Cora. And that'll retire the sign. Nothing across for the Blue Jays here in the sixth. There were no hits. No errors. A man left after five and a half. It's 4 3 Toronto. All right now, let's pause for that break from our local affiliates. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Earlier today, we talked to Jeff Torborg and asked him just how important the last game of a homestand was to win when going on a long road trip to the West Coast. I think the best way to answer any question relative to getaway day is uh, if we look back to last year we had lost five in a row after having played a big series against Oakland we lost the first two against the Angels. Um, we had to, to play the last game against the Angels and Langston their top pitcher at that point and then hit, head for the West Coast and we came back and, and really did a heck of a job. We won two to one even had our setup guy in in the fifth inning. Uh, we went to the coast and swept Oakland swept uh, the Angels came back and won one game against the Yankees so we won eight in a row and I think that getaway day was very important for us and I, I I think today is an important day for us too. Well it certainly has developed that this could be a very meaningful day. The Sox have been trying to find a rhythm a routine all season long and of course the brawl that occurred in the fifth inning as yeah, Sammy Sosa leads it off. Takes the lower inside is right right hander Mike Timlin is on to pitch for the Blue Jays in place of Todd Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre going five innings giving up three runs just one earned six hits four walks had four strikeouts and here's Timlin. Good rip by Sammy and the count one and one. Four eight and one Blue Jays three six and zero oh for the Sox. Timlin was a losing pitcher in the first game of this series. He worked two thirds of an inning, but he walked four, so yeah, he had walked. big time control problems that game. Three earned runs. Breaking ball low and away, stopped by Borders in the count, two balls and a strike. Outfield straight away, spread out a bit for Sammy. Count three and one. And as Wendy mentioned, he can definitely get wild. He had great command last weekend at Sky Dome, but not really so this this time around at Comiskey Park. Oh, yes. All four. Well, Stottlemyer walked four. That's five walks in just over five innings for this Blue Jay staff, and they're not usually equipped to do that. Well, no team really is. Here's Joey Cora. Let's see what Jeff Torborg decides to do here. He's going to bunny. Holyrood will come over to Timlin and get their signs straight. As Gianelli on the grass at third outfield bunched a bit swung well around to the left and they're short. So with the current corners charging hard right here. One good thing about it is you got good speed at first and Sammy Sosa. That's why you look at Gianelli's right on him. There goes Olaru with a good jump. Joey looking down to Boomer, Terry Bevington. Everybody got a big jump right there. Sandy Al I mean, Roberto Alomar, the second baseman. Son of Sandy. Son of Sandy and brother of Sandy. Was almost two first base when that ball was released by the pitcher. Here comes Olerud once again. This time yes. he takes it right down the third baseline. Fair ball. Sammy on his way to third. He's got to hurry. Safe. Corey in the second. Yes. Oh my goodness, what aggressive base running by Sammy Sosa. Oh, let's see. Look at Olerud coming way in, and Joey Cora crosses him up, slams it by Gianelli. Now Carter is right there, you know, guarding against the C. He's playing him right down the line almost. And look at Sammy, the great hustle. 
just does get in there. Good call by third base umpire Rick Reed. So Ozzy with a great RBI opportunity here. Runners at second and third, nobody out. Oh my. Well, we just mentioned the outfield was short, swung well around the left, and Carter standing right in front of it. Sammy challenged him and won it. So Corey in the second. And Ozzie one for two. Ozzie had a sharp single back through the middle in the fourth inning. Blue Jays bring the infield in, outfield short, swung around to the left. Dwayne Ward starting to loosen up. Dwayne is up early. Well, he's gone back to the setup man position with Hinky taking over once again as a closer. Ozzy takes the ball. Yeah, this is big right here to get these two runs across because if you can take that lead, you can kind of minimize the effectiveness of Ward and Hinky in this ball game. Maybe not even get him in the game is best. Well, that's certainly, in our opinion, at least the way we've talked about it, the biggest strength of the Blue Jays is that bullpen. And you get to Warden Hickey. So the 1 0 count to Ozzy. Foul ball. Ooh. A ball, a strike, nobody out. Sammy at third. And Cora at second. in position Sammy tags here he comes he's going to score game tied in four yeah Take a look at it. Pitch the good sinker that Timlin has down and away, but Ozzie did what he had to do to get that run across right there. The fly ball is deep enough. Joe Carter very wisely doesn't try and throw out Sammy Sosa at home because Cora could have then advanced to third base, gotten himself in scoring position with less than two outs. So for Ozzie Gian, that's RBI number eight on the season. 4 4 tie. Here's Tim. Rain says fly to left, walk, then bounce to second. Four, eight, and one for the Blue Jays, four, seven, and oh for the Sox. Of course, that one error by Toronto, a very huge error. That's inside. One and one to count. Ball on the inside corner. Timmy did not particularly care for that call. And it moves to one and two with Lance Johnson on deck. Timlin, two gone. Oh. 
Take a look at the pitch. They're right there. Fastball about knee high down the middle of the plate. So Timlin gets his first strikeout. Here's Lance. Lance one for three. But he has scalded it twice. Come on, one dog. There's a base hit in left field. Here comes Cora. Carter's got the ball. Here's a throw. Not a time. Sox lead at 5 4. Yes. Now the ball gets away. Here's Lance into third. Johnson's been scalding the ball. He gets his fourth RBI of the season right here. Just a bullet. Look at it. Fastball down and in. Little inside out action over the head of Gonzalez. <laughs> Another play at home play. Joey Cora just scooting along. And the bad throw by Carter. And look at Lance. Boy, he's just taking advantage of everything. That's the way to run those pillows. Super job by Lance Johnson. 5 4 White Sox. <laughs> what a ball game. What a game. Hey, look, Cisco pitching coach out to talk to Mike Timlin. And here comes Robin. Two out RBI for Lance Johnson, something he did with such great regularity last year. Robin takes it low. Robin one for three. Now feel straight away. Five, eight, no for the Sox, four, eight, and two for the Blue Jays. Takes the bunt, takes the ball, and the count. Two and oh with Big Frank on deck. Robin looked down there at Gianelli. He was way back. Well, he was seven or eight feet past in back of third base. As you look at Lance Johnson at third. Three balls, no strikes. running what a base running play by Sosa yeah had to play right in front of him that's ball four oh the second walk of the inning by Mike Timlin walk Sammy to lead it off and here comes Big Frank and here comes Big Cito he's going out there to get Dwayne Ward so Timlin, as Wimpy mentioned, was wild on Friday night. Boy, at Sky Dome, when we saw him up there for the first time, he looked awesome. He did. He's just a little bit out of sync right now. He's got a good arm. You can see all the movement he has on his pitches. So a break in the action here at Comiskey Park in what has been a very exciting baseball game. And we'll be back to give you the numbers on Dwayne Ward right after this. Next game coming your way on Sports Channel will be Tuesday evening. Game time 9:30 Chicago time. Second of that three-game set against the California Angels, and the starting pitchers there will be Alex Fernandez for the Sox and the Southpaw Jim Abbott for the Halos. And Dwayne Ward comes out to work for the Blue Jays. Outstanding. No 0, 0 and 1 with a 1.83 earned run average in 17 ball games. League leading 12 saves with Jeff Reardon giving up just 15 hits in 19 and two thirds innings. He has walked three while striking out 26. He is a good one. But the Sox take the lead here in the sixth inning by one. And runners still at the corners with two out for Frank Thomas. Big Frank has single sharply into left and knocking a run in the first inning. Walked in the third scored run and he walked last inning. So short lead by Robin at first. Lance with the lead off third and the pitch misses the count one and oh five eight no for the Sox four eight and two 
for the Blue Jays. Hello. Off the end of the bat. Ward will take it himself. He just got it right in the webbing of his glove. And that will retire the side, but not before the Sox do some damage. Coming up with two runs on two hits, one error. Two men left, and after six, Sox lead it 5 4. We're back at Comiskey Park in Chicago. Beautiful afternoon for baseball, and the Sox beating the Blue Jays as we speak 5 to 4. Completing six innings here, 5 8 0 for the Sox, 4 8 and 2 for Toronto. And the bullpen for the White Sox getting active here in the top half of the seventh. Don Paul, the right hander, and Scott Radinsky, the left hander. Roberto Alomar will lead things off for the Jays here in the seventh. Ken Patterson delivers a breaking ball down and in. Fastball catches the outside corner of the count even at one. Alomar is one for one in this ball game. Singled and two walks. Slider, he calls it high. Hit foul past third base coach Rich Hacker. So the count even at two. White Sox been battling hard. They took advantage of walks to have a couple of big innings. A two run third inning was aided by a couple of walks by Todd Stottlemyre and two walks by Mike Timlin in the sixth helped the cause. Ozzie Guillen and Lance Johnson with RBIs there. He went for a curveball in the dirt. Strikeout number three for Ken Patterson and the first important out of the of the inning is down in the seventh. Got to be careful right here to this guy. He just eats left handers up. Big time. That's right. We saw that graphic yesterday. He was the best in the business against left handed pitchers. Well over 400 about 450 is what he's hitting against lefties this year. Joe Carter had three hits yesterday. Three for five. There's a high fastball. Carter hitting 322 as he stands in there. 0 for 3 in this ball game has hit the ball in the air for the fourth consecutive time. Sammy Sosa with the run over there in right field. He was playing in the pull and an easy out for Sammy. So two up, two down here in the seventh. And a reminder, there are still individual game suites available. You can enjoy these luxury suites with your friends right here at Comiskey Park as the Sox take on the Royals or the Indians. So call the Sox sales office at 312-924-1000. John Olerud, he's the guy that started all this stuff with that home run in the fifth inning. Got a 2 1 fastball from Jack McDowell and hit it a mile to right field. One 0 fastball upstairs, 2 0. You got to be careful again with this guy. So, same situation once again. Gets a breaking ball here, catches the outside corner. Nice pitch by Patterson. 2 0 breaking ball low and away, I guess. Yeah. Let's see if you can't do that a couple more times. Another breaking ball. This one misses down and away. So we've got a 3 1 count. Two out, nobody on. Sox outfield playing, just shading him to left field a bit. There's a pop up straight back. Ooh, you almost had a play there. Could have been the first error in years. <laughs> so over route three and two now. Let's see what Pudge wants to do with him. It's like the fastball, number one down. 
Inside, just misses. So John Olerud walks. Second pass given up by Ken Patterson. That'll bring up Kenny Williams. Kenny Williams came in for Mark Witten and popped to first. Takes a high breaking ball upstairs, so he's ahead in the count, 1 0. Oh. Kenny hitting just 222. Breaking ball, did he go? Yes, he did. Tries the back door and misses. So Kenny Williams, that favorable hitters count now at two and one. John Olerud at first. Fastball late. Fouls it off right side, 2-2. Ken Patterson came in relief in the fifth inning with one out for Jack McDowell, who was ejected for the ball from the ball game for throwing behind Mark Witten. Has been in there ever since. Breaking ball misses away again. So a 3-2 count, two out. Old Road will be off with the pitch with Pat Borders on deck. Three, two, misses. And here comes the skipper. Imagine right here, he probably will go get Don Paul. This to Pat Borders. And indeed he does makes the sign so it will be the right hander Don Paul coming in as Patterson struck out Alomar to start the inning off got Carter on a little weak fly ball in the right field and he walked all route on three two and he walked Kenny Williams on three two. All in all a very fine job done by Ken Patterson coming on for Jack McDowell back in the fifth inning. I on Patterson. Two and a third. No runs, no hits, three walks, three strikeouts. We're breaking the action, and we'll be back to give you the numbers on the right hander Don Paul right after this. To keep the nation's business running like clockwork, one airline offers hourly service to top business centers and back every business day. United, the moving force behind Chicago's business, hourly. Come fly the friendly skies. Hey Sox fans, be sure and join me and Jeff Torborg next week on White Sox Weekly. We're going to show you all the highlights from last week's action, including the Crosstown Classic with the Cubs. Also, we'll have a great feature on the baseball card booth only at Comiskey Park. That's next week on White Sox Weekly. Sox make a pitching change here in the seventh inning with two out. Here comes the Pope, Don Paul. One and one with a 0.53 earned run average in 13 appearances. Giving up just 14 hits in 17 innings, five walks and eight strikeouts. So the situation, two out, runners at first and second. Two walks issued by Ken Patterson, who gave two and a third very strong innings of relief for the White Sox. Sox, in the meantime, have come back. And taking the lead 5 4 in the seventh inning. Pat Porters will be the first hitter that Don Paul faces. You can see a beautiful sunshine afternoon here in Chicago, but the shadows are starting to come in, and that will definitely come into play in the last couple innings of this ballgame. You joined us late, you've missed a whole bunch of action. And this way, go. 
Five runs, eight hits, no errors for the Sox. Four runs, eight hits, and two errors for the Blue Jays. And here's the catcher, Pat Borders. He's been to the plate one time. He struck out. That was in the fifth inning. That came on for Greg Myers, who was hit right in the hand with a foul tip flush. Now we understand there's some contusions on the first three fingers of his right hand, but the X-rays were negative, and that's good good news. So here's Borders with Olerud at second and Williams at first, two out, top of the seventh. Checks it up, takes the ball. Side and, low. and the count two and nothing. With Mookie Wilson on deck. Now Phil swung around to the left. Ventura well back at third. Borders in good shape with a 2 0 count. Swinging on a 3-0 pitch into right field. Sammy a long way to go. Yes! In foul territory, Sammy Sosa makes a nice running catch. He had a long way to go and not too much time to get there. After six and a half, Sox lead it. 5-4. Right now, let's pause for that break from our local affiliates. Wonder how far the White Sox will go? Wondering what's on Jeff Torborg's mind? Wondering how you can see Sox games a second time? No more need to wonder, because Sports Channel has more than 100 Sox games, White Sox Weekly with Jeff Torborg, and morning replays of the previous day's game. When it comes to the White Sox, we cover all the bases. Sports Channel, our season never ends. All right, now let's check out our Sherwin-Williams Major League scoreboard for you. There you see the Yankees over the Mariners, 3-2 in the Bronx. Oakland hammered Cleveland, 9-4 in Ohio. California hurt Baltimore, 10-2 at Memorial Stadium. Tigers over the Twins, 8-3. It was Milwaukee at Kansas City, beating the Royals, 4-2. Texas thumping the Red Sox, 12-3 in Arlington. National League, the Braves hurt the Pirates, 7-1 down in Georgia. San Diego, 3. Cincinnati, 2. Blues, not a happy camper. 9-2. Cardinals beat Houston. There you see Dodgers 2 0 over the Mets. That's in the fourth. Montreal leading San Francisco. 3 1 in the fifth. Later on, the Cubs take on the Phillies. What a catch by Sammy Sosa. Had a long way to go. 3 0. Count to Pat Borders. He's looking for him to pull if he's hitting it all. Goes the other way with it. Well, that's really being on your toes, really, Hawk, when you think about it. You got to be thinking he's going to pull right there. Actually, he should relax because he should have been taken in that situation. Don Fall threw three consecutive balls coming out of the bullpen. Boy, he just got down off the hook. Could have created a bases loaded situation for Mookie Wilson, the not the on deck hitter. Where well, one single puts him ahead. Meanwhile, Sox will take it. Matt Marullo will lead it off. Matt, two for three this afternoon. Breaking ball down and in. 5 8 0 for the Sox, 4 8 and 2 for the Blue Jays. Now feel straight up, spread out. That's hammered foul. No balls, two strikes. Borders to the outside. Fastball misses in the count one and two. As you can see, those shadows just starting to creep into the vicinity of home plate.
That's gone. Ball gets away from Borders. He has plenty of time. And there's one gone. Six strikeout for our Blue Jay pitching this afternoon. First for Ward. That'll bring up the catcher, Carlton Fisk. Punches Wong. Mouse back to the pitcher. Hit it hard, I should say. And he struck out in the fifth. Takes it lower and inside. Takes a strike and the count evens at one. Carlton hitting at 291 as he stands in. Sox will be off to California after this ball game this afternoon. Three in Anaheim. Hit it off the end of the bat, Alomar. And there's two guns. And after the three at Big A in Anaheim, jet on up to Oakland to the Coliseum to take on the A's in a four game series. And of course, last year the Sox held a season series edge over every team in the American League West. So with two out here, Sammy. Sammy's 0 for 2, but that's not the story on his performance this afternoon. He walked in the sixth. Last inning to start off that two run rally. He's made a couple of fine defensive plays in the outfield. He also has made an outstanding base running play. That slashed foul. 0 oh 2 the count. So Sammy has had a good afternoon. Up high, one and two. Sammy's gone, and that'll retire the side. A one, two, three inning for Dwayne Ward. That's the first one, two, three inning in this ball game by any pitcher. And after seven, Sox lead it five, four. Well, coming your way after the ball game this evening here on Sports Channel, it'll be National Hockey League action. Stanley Cup Finals, Game 3, 7 p.m., Pittsburgh, the Penguins against the North Stars. But right here, it's the top of the eighth inning. That's the story. And this has been a Lulu. Just one home run in the ball game, John Olerud, that was in the fifth inning. As Mookie Wilson will lead it off. It'll be Wilson, Ginelli, and Gonzalez, the lower third of the Blue Jay order. Mookie 0 for 3 on the ball game this afternoon, hitting just 226. There's Corey Snyder goes in to play first base for Matt Marullo. And they are Guarding against the bunt in at the corners and guarding the lines with the one run lead. Fastball misses, so Don Paul falls behind Mookie Wilson 2 0. Recall last inning. Green light for Pat Borders 3 0, and he fouled out to Sammy Sosa to end that Blue Jay threat. There's a shot in the right field, base hit. So Mookie now 1 for 4 in the afternoon. Look, he has good speed, still at 35 years of age, but the key right here is Don Paul cannot get, keep getting down in the count 2 0. He's got to be able to get that splitter over, as you see, the Thigmeister. Bobby Thigpen warming up in that bullpen, and here's Gianelli. See, their Sox are looking for a bunt. Robin Ventura in on the grass at third. Mookie with that good speed as Hawk just mentioned. 
gets back. Mookie two for three in stolen bases so far this season. Ginelli takes the called strike on the outside corners. Showed no signs of bunning there. And he checks down there with third base coach Rich Hacker. Mookie Wilson with the good speed at first. Sox trying to protect this one run lead. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Quick throw over. And a reminder that Sunday, June 2nd at 7.05, the Sox host the Oakland A's. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Comiskey Park inaugural year patch and a $25 United Airlines gift certificate, all courtesy of United Airlines. Call 312-831-1-SOX. Well, there's a pitch, just misses the outside corner. So the Blue Jays have always disdained the sacrifice bunt in the past, although this year they are bunting a lot more frequently. But on the road, trailing by one, they're going for the win. If you let Pat, or, Pat Borders hit 3-0, and you yeah. on that situation. You're definitely going for the win. Yeah, pretty obvious. Took a crack, couldn't get the head of the bat through and fouled it off right side. And that's not a good sign. There's a, another throw over to first. Toronto has bunted successfully 18 times for sacrifices this year. Well, pitch out wasn't going. So a 2 1 count for Giannelli. Could it be a hit and run? Mookie's got the good speed. Tough to throw another pitch out in this situation and get that far down. He's going. Swung on, fouled straight back. Pretty good jump there by Mookie Wilson. So the count even now at two. A lot of room out there in right center field for Ginelli. Bob McDonald, left-hander warming up for the Blue Jays. Yeah, I just soon see Ward out of this ball game in the eighth inning. Gianelli hitting at 174 has yet to get an RBI this season. Splitter. Mookie was going. Foul ball. Corey Snyder reached across the first baseline to make that play. Here's a situation, too, where Corey Snyder will not be jumping off the bag real quick to try and cover up that hole with a left-handed hitter up. He's going to stay back a little bit more and protect against the ball going down the first baseline for extra bases. To the count, even to Gianelli. Yeah. Look, he doesn't go, takes ball three. So if he can run... Two and one. I'm sure he'll be going here. Three and two. Don Paul's got to make a pitch here. Mookie doesn't have a real big lead over there, but he's got great acceleration. Been a fine base dealer in the National League with the Mets for so many years. He's gone. Inside fastball. Got him to throw to second. He's in there. So Mookie Wilson steals his third base of the season as Ginelli goes down. And Jeff Torborg is starting to make that slow walk out to the mound. Runner at second now with one out.
Look at regulation fastball there, Hawk, on the inside corner. Now you mentioned Mookie with a good speed. There is just a good movement on the fastball, but Mookie steals it easily. So Paul will depart. And here comes Thiggy. Bobby Thigpen coming on. He is the fourth Sox pitcher of the afternoon. He joined us late. Jack McDonald started with four and a third. He had four runs, two walks, had five strikeouts. Patterson came on, went two and a third, giving up nothing. He had three walks, though. We go along with three strikeouts, so good job by Patterson. But McDowell was ejected in the fifth inning after throwing behind Mark Whitten. And a fight ensued. Witten charged them out. Both benches empty. Witten and Jack both were thrown out of the ball game. And the Sox absolutely have turned their dial up a little bit since that event. Wimpy, they have, it seems like there's a little more of what we saw last year. The pizzazz is there. No, oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that, Hawk. As you look at Thiggy's numbers, there it's just a tremendous turnaround. And, uh, if that's what it takes, I guess sometimes you have to do something like that to, to get the adrenaline flowing again the way it's supposed to. So Bobby Thickpin comes out to work for the Sox here. Boy, look at Kids Corner. They are lined up out there. There's so many great things for the youngsters. And on a Sunday afternoon, on a giveaway day, a great giveaway day. Everybody, look at this. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, they were all out here this afternoon. They all, they still are having a ball. 44,149 in attendance. 41,015 paid, so over 3,130. Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, they were marching around prior to the game, and I'll tell you, they were just having a ball. But here we go. Thiggy has concluded his warm-up tosses, and the shortstop, Rene Gonzalez, had a big two-run double in the second. He struck out in the fourth, and he walked in the sixth. Tying run at second base in Mookie Wilson. One out to Gonzalez outfield. Bunch swung around to the right. 5-8-0 and for the Sox, 4-9-2 and for the Blue Jays. Again, the pitching matchups. As you look at the graphic on thick pen, the pitching matchups for the California series tomorrow night will be Melito Perez against Mark Langston. Langston, Southpaw, four and one for the Angels on Tuesday. Alex Fernandez against Jim Abbott, Abbott three and four. And on Wednesday, Charlie Huff against Scott Lewis, who is one and four for the Halos. And we will have the Tuesday and Wednesday's, Wednesday games for you right here on Sports Channel. Pitch to Rene Gonzalez. Takes the ball. Ozzy trying to hold Wilson close. Come back a right to Figgy. He'll hold Wilson. Go over to Curry. Two gone. Bobby made a good pitch with the fastball running in on the hands of Rene Gonzalez. He jammed him and got the easy out. So that'll bring up Devon White. Devon is two for four on the afternoon. Throw that high gas to him. Devon White swinging the bat just about as well as we've seen him in a long, long time. Yeah, yeah he is. Boy, anything down, he is just smoking it. Ventura even with a bag at third as the fastball misses. Now feels shading over him to the left. Big gap between Lance and Sammy. Gas. 
severe. They think he had a little giddy up on that one. Late in the count, two balls and a strike with Roberto Alomar on deck. Three balls and a strike. White struck out in the first, knocked in a run with a single in the second. He single, stole a base in the fourth. Hit into a force play in the sixth. Yes, and a count full. Well, Devine has showed us throughout his entire career he can't hit that pitch upstairs. Got to take it. Of course, nobody calls that pitch a strike. That's about letter high. Throw another one up there. See if he can. That's out of play into the mezzanine section. And the count hangs at three and two. That's amazing when that pitch is up like that. Devon cannot get a good swing at it. Just gets a piece back into the mezzanine again. Another souvenir. So Bobby Thigpen trying to put Devon White away in a 5 4 Sox lead here, top of the eighth inning. Six walk by Sox pitching. And here comes Alomar. He's had two of those walks. Also a single and a strikeout. Oh, what a big game this afternoon. For a whole bunch of reasons. Ball strike outside corner. Outstanding speed on the base pass with Wilson at second. An even better speed with Devon White at first. 0 oh 2 the count. And there's the on deck hitter, Joe Carter. Just leave him right where he's at, Figgy. He's not bothering anybody. Yeah, let him lead off the ninth. The 0 2 pitch. Don't try and trick him. He tried to trick him in Toronto with a slider. Got it up. A spiral. And it left the park in a hurry. Bottom of the ninth. And Alomar looks like he waits back pretty good on that breaking ball. And he gets a little fastball well, too. Pops this one up. Ventura over by the Sox dugout. Now the wind trying to push it out. He's got room. Makes the catch. And the side is retired. Nothing across. There was a hit. No errors. Two men left after seven and a half. Sox lead at five four. Right now, let's pause for a break from our local affiliates. More action coming your way right here on Sports Channel Tuesday night. It'll be Game Two at six thirty. It'll be the Sports Channel report followed at seven by the Bulls and the Pistons right here on Sports Channel. And of course, right after that ball game. 
the basketball game. We will join the Sox out at the Big A in Anaheim. But right here, Wimpy, a new pitcher for the Blue Jays. It's a left-hander. Bob McDonald comes out to work for the Jays here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. No record, 3-3-8, earned run average in six games. Pitch just five and a third innings, giving up six hits, one walk, and four strikeouts. So he's on in relief of Dwayne Ward, who did his job. Timlin is the pitcher of record for Toronto. He stands to lose this ball game if Toronto cannot mount a charge in the top half of the ninth inning. Joey Cora, who has had the big hit of the ball game thus far for the Sox, that was in the sixth. He'll lead it off. Cora, Ozzy, then the top of the order, Tim Raines. Takes the ball. Back in the sixth inning with Sammy aboard, he had walked off Timlin to lead it off. Corners were in close, charging for the bunt. Cora just smashed one past Ray Ginelli at third. That's when Sammy made the outstanding, aggressive base running play. As he had to play in front of him, Carter was short and swung well over to the left. Had the ball in a hurry, and Sammy challenged him and won. Now feel straight away. Back door to him right there. The count one and two. Side, two balls, two strikes. That's left foul out of play right side. So the count hangs at two and two. Final from Texas. Rangers hurt the Red Sox 12 4. That's in the right field. That's going to be a base hit as Kenny Williams looked like he got a bad jump on the ball right there. So good speed aboard and Joy Coral. Big right there. Of course, Ozzy, this is a bunt situation. Let's see if he can get him over the second base in scoring position. Yeah, you're right, because he was playing very shallow on Joey Cora and swung around that way anyway. But Joey drops it in there nonetheless. So. Joey Cora with two consecutive hits. And here's Oz. Oz, he won for two, but he has a sacrifice fly. Just a decent lead by Cora as Oz, he pops it up. That'll be back. And the count, nothing in one. <laughs> Willie Frazier down in the Toronto pen. Ginelli in close. Five nine and zero for the Sox. Four nine and two for the Blue Jays. Checks it up. Takes the ball. Other American League scores. Brew Crew. Beats Royals 4-2 in Kansas City. Tigers over the Twins 8-3 in Detroit. California 10, Baltimore 2 at Memorial Stadium. Oakland was trailing 3-0 at Cleveland, came back to beat the Indians 9-4. And the Yankees over the Mariners 3-2 in the Bronx. Ozzy fouls that one back in the count one and two. The boomer Terry Bevington going through his sequence. Now Ginelli backs up even with a bag. Checking some scores for you in the National League. The Braves beat the Pirates 7 to 1 in Atlanta. 
Cardinals over the Astros 9 2 at Bush Stadium. Padres beat the Reds 3 2 at Riverfront. That's it hard in the right field. Kenny Williams did not get a good jump, but he's going to have time to get back there now, make the catch on the track, and there's one gone. Might be a little tough right now in the outfield to get a jump on the ball, the ball coming out of the stands. Here's Kenny almost to the warning track. Ozzie gave it a pretty good ride there. So with one out, Tim Raines will hit. Runner still at first base. Sox leading at 5-4. Well, the National League action in progress. Dodgers beating the Mets 5-2. Top of the sixth inning in L.A. Montreal leading the Giants 4-2. Bottom of the eighth at Candlestick. Later on tonight, the Cubs take on the Phillies at Veterans Stadium. But here's Reigns. Demi has fly to left, walk. Now it's the second and struck out. by Cora at first. You can see McDonald does not have a real good move for a left-hander. Are you suggesting that Joy might be able to pilfer this base? Pretty good chance of it. There he goes. Borders, no chance. Four stolen base for Joey Cora. Joey playing some baseball. You can see he got a great jump right there on McDonald. Really no chance for Borders. He had the quick release, and he got it there in a hurry. Yeah, Pat did everything he could right here, getting rid of it on the money. Joey had that one. Little Nate slide with that head first dive, though. Well, when you got when you got the pitcher down. You can go ahead and get that good jump because you're not afraid mentally. You're you're thinking second base. You're not thinking getting back into first. So he did exactly that. Got the good jump and stole it easily. Yeah. So the count of one, one to Reigns. And look at this from the stadium. Bulls game one Eastern Conference Finals over the Pistons, 94-83. Yes. All right, Bulls. Pitch outside and count one and one. And Ron Karkovice, as you know, if you've been with us all afternoon, left the game. That was back in the second inning. We understand he has a torn ligament in his left thumb. And that is a no good news. Wow. First serious injury. There's a throwback to second base. Cora back easily. That's the first real bad injury the Sox have had in two years. Don't know, certainly wouldn't know how long Carco would be out, but it'd ha have to be a pretty long period. So they're going to put Reigns on intentionally. Get to Lance Johnson and Robin Ventura. With one out here in the bottom of the eighth, as the Sox trying to put an insurance point on that board. That's all right. I'll take Lance in this situation. That gum right. He's swinging the bat as well as anybody in the lineup. Mm hmm. There's ball four. Eighth walk issued by Blue Jay pitching this afternoon. And here's Lance. Lance is two for four. He has smoked it three times. He has two stolen bases in this game, a run scored, and an RBI. Had that big. Two out single in the sixth inning. Want to know the count? Good speed aboard. Core at second. Reigns at first. And outfield. Bunch swung around to the left. 
Down low, 2 0. Three balls, no strikes. On deck hitter. There's a strike. Those shadows are really coming into play right now. They've gotten to, to the mound. As you look at Willie Frazier warming in the Blue Jay bullpen, he'd definitely be in there for Frank. Right side, Alomar over to Gonzalez. They cannot turn it. And now they're going to call interference, double play, as Reigns went out of the line. So Rocky Rowe, boy, I tell you, that's a tough one for the Sox to swallow after what we saw in Milwaukee. That's a pretty good call, but still, after what we had to swallow in Milwaukee when it cost us a ball game again, for us, that's a tough one to swallow. Yes, it is. So that'll do it. Nothing across. They'll go to the ninth with the Sox leading it 5-4. Skipper Jeff Talborg has just returned to the dugout after having a conversation out there with Rocky Rowe on a call at second base on Rocker Tim Raines for interference. You can see right here, Alomar gets the goers to the shortstop Gonzalez. Now, if you can't touch the bag, this considered interference. So that was close and close enough to where you can see where Rowe would call it, Weppy. Yeah, no Again, doubt about it. With our situation here with the Sox and the game that it cost us the game in Milwaukee where Molitor had no chance whatsoever. Yeah. And they didn't call it. it looked like Molitor went from inside the baseline, the so-called baseline between first and second, way out to get him. Rain certainly wasn't as flagrant as Molitor. No, that was close. Yeah. So that's the story here in the top of the ninth inning. 5 9 and 0 for the Sox, 4 9 and 2 for the Jays. It'll be Carter, Olerud, and Williams, the scheduled hitters, to face the right hander Bobby Thigpen. Carter's drawn the collar this afternoon. He's gone out to right twice, and he's gone out to left twice. There's a breaking ball strike. Alfield swung well around to the left. Sammy way over into right center. Ventura, a couple of steps off the line at third. And deep. Whoa, that's inside. And the count one and one. Fastball high, two balls and a strike. Thank the you. Bad pitch and the count two and two. Well, there's a case of guessing strike and swinging. Well, a lot of times off thick. Sometimes this ball runs out there, moves so much that you'll see right-handers make some funny swings on him. He's gone. Grab some bench. Boy, he ate him up inside and then came back away. Carter. Looked like he had trouble picking up the ball right here. Well, he just aces him down and away. You can see a feeble swing at that pitch. I don't think Joe uh, is really seeing the ball that well. You see, just kind of flailing. That back heel never came off the ground. Olaru, one for three. Long home run back in the fifth inning. One and know the count. Back out of play. And if you just walked in, turned on the set, and did not hear, Bulls beat the Pistons 94-83 in one of the Eastern Finals. Yeah. 
A shot, that's trouble. Foul. Oh, Thank you very much. 94-83, the Bulls over the Pistons in game one. And we'll have game two for you right here on Sports Channel. Overrood almost nailed it. You got to think it's tough to see the ball at the plate right now, Hawk. You look at those shadows right there just beyond Figgy and the pitcher's mound. Overrood a little bit late on that swing, and you saw the, the swings that Carter was taking, the previous hitters. Looks like they're just not seeing it that well. And again, it might be the gas. It could be. <laughs> that might has be a little like something a to do with it sometimes. <laughs> Tried to backdoor him right there. And a count two and two. I think he looks like he's revving it up pretty good. There's Kenny Williams, the on deck hitter. Fastball off the plate, and the count goes full to John Olerud. Off the end of the bat, Joy Cora is right where he's supposed to be. Over to Corey. And there's two gone. Got down, took it off the chest as it took a funny hop. Kept it in front of him. You can do that when you play the right side of the infield. There's our next televised game on Sports Channel. That'll be Tuesday at 9.30. The Sox and the California Angels. Alex Fernandez against left-hander Jim Abbott. A couple of youngsters there. So a nice play by Joy Cora for the second out. And here's Kenny Williams. He's 0 for 1. He's popped to first and he's walked. There's a butt going foul. This is Witten Spart in the lineup. You know, not, not to take anything away from Kenny Williams, but he doesn't match up against Bobby Thigpen as strong as Mark Witten would. Ozzy. Corey. Yes. Bobby Thigpen comes on, saves it, as the Sox take the rubber match of this three game set. They win it five to four. And we'll be back to wrap it up right after this. There it is. Totals on the board for this afternoon's ball game as the Sox take the rubber match in this three game set. They win it five to four for the Sox. Five runs, nine hits, no errors. They stranded nine for the Jays. Four runs, nine hits, two big errors, and they stranded ten. The winner, Ken Patterson, son of Gene from Waco. He is now one and zero. Oh. And Mike Tillman, the loser, three and two. Credit Bobby Thigpen with his eighth save of the season. And our Budweiser player of this game this afternoon goes to the one dog, Lance Johnson. He is really swinging the bat well. Knocked in the game winner. But indeed a big game and if you did not see it from the outset it was something a lot of excitement in the fifth inning there there was a home run by John Olerud and it was Jack McDowell throwing behind Mark Witten wouldn't charge the mound both benches emptied and went yeah, you got to think that that thing just brought the Sox right up the adrenaline started flowing and they played a different level of intensity after that I don't think there's any question about that it had a great deal to do with the victory tonight the Sox quite frankly yesterday were a little bit down they didn't play really anywhere near they're capable of doing and right after Jack McDowell threw that pitch it seemed to really ignite the team they played very well after that Lance Johnson got some clutch hits Ozzie drove in the run with the sacrifice fly they did everything they had to do to win this ball game there were some good defensive plays by Sammy Sosa and right field some very aggressive base running out there also some bad news though Ron Karkovice in the second inning had to leave the ball game and we understand he has a torn ligament in his left thumb we'll be back with more right after this Sports Channel's coverage of Chicago White Sox baseball has been brought to you in part by your greater Chicagoland area Sherwin-Williams paint stores. There's only one paint this good, and there's only one place you can get it. The pro knows. Ask Sherwin-Williams. By your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer, where it's Advantage Chrysler. By United, who is proud to be the official airline of the Chicago White Sox and the moving force behind Chicago's business. Come fly the friendly skies. By the Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago's number one selling newspaper. By Budweiser, the king of beers with that clean, crisp, cold taste, nothing beats a Bud. By True Value, got a tough job to do? 
you can do it with True Value Hardware Stores and by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Honda dealers. As you look at the scoreboard here at beautiful Comiskey Park, our Sherwin-Williams play of the game came in the bottom of the sixth inning with Sammy Sosa at first. He had let it off with a walk against the right-hander Mike Timlin. See the corners in close. Joy Cora at the plate, Wimpy. And he nails it right down the line, as you can see. And Joe Carter is right there. I mean, he doesn't even have to move to his right. Sammy Sosa with one of the great base running maneuvers we have seen in a long time. Two runners in scoring position. Both of those guys scored, and that was the margin of victory. So indeed, it was a grand afternoon here in Chicago as the Sox take the rubber match 5-4. to four. Also, the Bulls over the Pistons, 94-83 at the stadium. But again, we talked about it. You talked with Jeff Torborg prior to the game about the importance of winning this particular ball game today going out there to the Coast. We've got three with the Angels starting tomorrow night. We'll have Tuesday and Wednesday's game for you right here on Sports Channel. And then we'll have four up there at the Coliseum in Oakland. So a big game indeed. Wendy. Oh, it really was a big ball game. It's going to make that plane flight a whole lot nicer. Jack McDonald might not feel too good on the plane. A little bit of a headache. But he ignited that thing. And everything went really well. Jeff said it. You want to win that ball game on getaway day. All right, our next game on Sports Channel will indeed be Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Chicago time as the Sox travel to Anaheim to face the Angels. This game was produced and directed by James A. Angio. The coordinating producer is Greg Bowman. Our executive producer is our buddy John Tui. Remote facilities were provided by Trio Video. Once again, the final score, Sox win it 5-4. So for my partner, the Wimperoo, Tom Paturik, our producer-director, Jim Angio, our stage manager, Doug Stanton, this is a Hawk, Ken Harrelson. So long, everybody. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Sports Channel. Yes!